Hello, welcome, welcome back to another episode of Teaching YouTubers How to Paint. Although if you've seen the title for today's episode, you'll know something is a little different. Just a wee bit different, but I am Dreaming Tabitha. I'm an artist here on YouTube if you're new here. And uh, I like to do an experiment with all kinds of things, but it is fun to paint or draw or sketch or create with other people. And so I'm very much looking forward today to my guest and the, like I said, the challenges that will arise from here. But uh, if, you are, if you're new here, be sure to explore the channel as you go along in your life's journey. Give me a like. Give me a like, give the thumbs up, subscribe if you like what you see here. But I just want to quickly, just quickly say that I appreciate all of my subscribers and I really appreciate the support that I have gotten last year into this new year. It's the first first painting stream like this of the new year. And I, re again, appreciate everybody and what they did last year, whether you were commenting in the chat, whether you were sharing these things on Twitter, and especially, I didn't say especially, but especially the people that did um, get me some stuff off of my Amazon wish list. Look, I didn't know if anybody would get me anything, but I appreciate the people that did. I, I On my last live stream, I showcased that I have my Bastila Shan. Uh, Funko Pop. And then I just recently got this absolutely amazing notebook journal thing. Look how thick this thing is. And not only that, the reason that I loved it so much is because it looks like something Gandalf would search through while trying to discover information about the ring. Obviously, there's nothing in here, but this looks so old. And I'm just so grateful and appreciative to the people that just hang out and like the channel and just support support creative people, right? And, uh, you know, we're here for you. I see we've got Holocron Library Fox. Hey, thank you. And C4C, excellent that you're here. I'm sure more will show up. We are doing a little different time of day. Typically, it's in the morning. It is for some people. Uh, my guest is a little bit back behind the schedule, right? I told everybody this started at three. It didn't start for him. Um, they make sure that he's available. <laughs> uh, got him backstage. I just don't want to bring him on. And then there'd be like dead silence, those crickets that everybody loves so much. But yeah, thank you again for stopping by. I will bring them on and they will talk to me when they get on here just because we're going to get rolling. So like I said, today is a little bit different because it's going to be fine artist meets digital artist. Although on his channel, he doesn't do just digital art, but just recently got into it. And uh, go ahead. If he, he's cool with it, I'll go ahead and bring him on. Uh, Makani Draw. But don't worry. This will get you the likes right here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> immediately. All right. People came right here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Wherever you are, my name is Makani Nighty, artist, and illustrator, and it is time. And I'm very proud to be here with Tabitha, I feel like it's been a long time coming. I feel like this is like the crossover of the year, the ultimate crossover of the year. So exactly, welcome. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I've, I've I've been excited to be a part of this. So that's right. I've been catching your live streams from time to time. I, Sundays are a busy day for this gal over here, but sometimes I do pop into your streams, and I saw that you are amazing artists with with ink drawings mainly. Is it? Ink, yeah, I'm mostly an inker. <laughs> an inker. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to get more into about who you are and what you do as we go along in our journey. So our my guest here, uh, when I asked him, if you guys don't know, I'll go ahead and quickly explain. When I ask awesome people like Makani to be on the channel, I'm like, hey, I want to teach you how to paint something. And uh, you get to choose whatever it is that we're going to try to paint. And then I'll create something and let's just see how it rolls right and so mm -hmm. he was like let's do super mario so let's, I have let's do uh, i'll put it this way i'm like okay so we hang out in the different so we hate so we we have no so many people in like our circles whatever you want to call it and such like out of everybody we know and the people we hang out people we visit what is the one thing that we all universally love and that is Mario. Oh, so okay. <laughs> there we go. What is the word? Coffee. Well, that too. There's a lot of things. Okay, to be fair, there's a lot of things that we universally love. Right. <laughs> Mario is just one of them. This so I figured let's let's do let's let's draw Mario. 
and yeah, uh, there we go. That's so gorgeous. That's Little so Italian gorgeous. plumber there. So, no. but what you sighed? All or right, are you sad? Right, my turn. And oh, okay. obvious. Yeah, his there is almost, we go. There we go. We're doing something a little different. As you can see, he's got the fancy stuff. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't call that. I wouldn't call it that. Uh. <laughs> um, all right, that's true. My stuff's pretty fancy. I did. Some of my exactly. subscribers did get me some brand new brushes, and these things are the bee's knees. But yours is just fancy in the fact that it's digital. And so, I mean, with that being the era that we're living in, well, really for the past decade, but since I've just now gotten into digital artwork, it's brand new all over the world in my mind. Uh, to, be, so <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair, yes, so you, you, yes. I actually did get fancy brushes courtesy of one specific person who gave me like, who bought me like five sets of different brushes that I'm showing right now. Oh, hang five on a different sets of straight brushes. You can see oh. on the left side, right side of my screen. All my one person bought me all these brushes when I found out that I, I was when he found out what went digital. So yeah, that is mighty generous because the the nice ones can sometimes cost a pretty penny. So it's <laughs> really generous. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, that being said, then we're you can see you know you might be wondering to yourself why in the world does Mockney have color on his canvas already? It's a good question because he's cheating and trying to outdo me with his digital artwork. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what it is? I'm sorry. It's like as in Super Mario, he is trying to one up me here. <laughs> so, that is not that is not true. What is he has it? already no, gotten like, started, and <laughs> I have nothing. So I'm gonna have to hurry up and go ahead and go. So I've already got. Gonna, like, I, we've established we've established backstage before the stream before the show started that Tabitha was gonna finish before me. Because I'm gonna take it's gonna for me it's gonna take a long time to do this one. I so, I just put you, it together. So you say that, but we'll find out. Now I do understand that um, trying to get it to look just right because this is a very different style. It looks like from what you're accustomed to doing in a very different. It, it is so different, and yet I'm enjoying every like so every just minute of get it. Started though. with it. Um, but, and then just kind of talk about it. I, on that line of this being something very different than what you're accustomed to, you, most of the designs, unless I have not tapped into some folder that you have, most of your designs are usually like voluptuous, beautiful gals. Is that not true? Yes and no. Or, okay. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's actually yes are. on both accounts. Yes on that, but also yes on you have not tapped into my folders yet. Okay. So I, 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 I am. <laughs> Because I was like, I what's he going to do to poor Mario thing, today? Uh, like, uh, you know what? Everybody was expecting that. It was a, Everybody was expecting that. So I'm very happy that I have subverted everybody's expectations right now. Excellent. <laughs> I was like, what kind of booty is Mario going to show up with and, today? Ha, um, ha, 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 I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. There you go. Well, so that being said, um, I, I'm excited to see what it's going to look like at the end. But that being said, mm -hmm. you typically, like I said, do like like ink work, right? Like yes. specific kind of. It's not markers. It's literally like pens, like specific. It's pens, pens. yeah. It's pens. Um, it's brush pens, and I do do markers. I will happily do markers as well. It's just that it just it, it it's kind of a hassle trying to get 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 the get the markers out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <And they're> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> And you're thinking, I know everybody's thinking, it's like, it's, is it that much of a hassle to get like yes. a bunch of markers out? It's like, yes, yes especially when you have, especially when you have, let's see, 10, 12 cups, six bags, and uh, <laughs> five, six cases of nothing but markers from different brands. Exactly. That's why I tell, I took a picture where I was like, uh, of all the markers I had, and I have like a group of Spectrum Noir, got the Copic marker, I have as Arte Arteza, and I'm like, I, you know, when people ask me to put up my Amazon link, and it's like, please, I need more more markers. I know it doesn't look like I do. You know, I need to come up, you know, I need to figure out an Amazon, maybe I need to put together an Amazon wish list, but I don't think anybody's going to buy me anything from that. I didn't <laughs> think anybody was going to buy me, but they asked me to put it up there, so I did, and I've like, gotten some. I'm going to have to look things. into that, see, I'm going to say, <laughs> I have to think about that for the next for the next uh for for the next yeah. mocking live so. i never would have thought about it either and people are so generous it's so sweet is that they are um, absolutely 
So my brother told me about it, who also learned it from another YouTuber called Try to Finish Something. And he's a Star Wars room builder. Mm -hmm. And so like props and stuff like that. And uh, he puts that on there as well. He's not too big of um, making Patreon and stuff like that. You know, I've got all the outlets. I've got the Etsy store. I've got Patreon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got all that stuff. But he likes to limit it down a little bit. And so he just put items that if people wanted to, that they could support the channel by getting him things that he could use for his projects. So my mm -hmm. brother told me about it. And I was like, you know, somebody has asked me about that. Okay. I, I, I always like I always uh like my thing with me was that I always uh I always bring this up that you know this big this big tablet that we have here this 22 inch tablet mm. you know what that was I like to think that was all thanks to you know the people who supported me the people who got me to 1k you know, oh, yeah. people, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, like this is all, you know, this is my like, thank you to all y'all's that I'm doing digital now because of your incredible support. So I always kind of feel like I want to make sure I give it back and feel like you guys, when you guys, people who watch a day in and day out, people who subscribe, people who are just so engaged with uh, the stuff I do is that, you know, you're, you're pushing me, you're inspiring me, you're motivating me to, to want to do the things I always wanted to do, to yes. to want to uh, grow the uh, to just grow my brand and to just grow my journey. So that's that's always been the, my thing for me. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'll get back to like preferences and and what you enjoy using to create. But with that being said, like that was so beautifully said, is that without the supporters, you know, you guys make us feel like what we're doing is in a way worth doing. We should, we should be doing it because of the fact that, um, Hey, Dimash, like, that that's because we want to, because it's who we are, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But having that support group of people that are willing to watch you create, watch, willing to watch you struggle and fail, um, is huge because that's a lot of artists don't have that. And that is one thing that's really fascinating and, and great about the internet. You know, there are a lot of bad things that can happen on the inner wide web there, but artists can really find a way to find their group of people, if mm -hmm. you will. And even if they're not artists themselves, but art lovers, appreciators, sometimes they just like the conversations that you have, but exactly. Um, yeah. Like you said, you can't really do it without them. You'd like to think, and it's so true that without them, there, there's no reason I, I continue with this series, not be just because I like it and I, it's fun hanging out with people. It is. But also because of the fact that I was told that so many people really loved it. And there you go. I mean, that's, that's, it's, I don't want to say that's worth it all right there, but it is a huge part having people see, that you support go. you. And I mean, you've switched over. So you were doing your ink drawings and now you've gone digital and hey, that Mark. can be scary. Yeah, because people are so accustomed to you doing it one way, you know, it's like, are they going to enjoy we had a, it the other way? And, and in fact, the the and I'm happy to happy you brought that up because we did have a discussion about that. I had a discussion about that with my co-hosts yesterday on uh, last Sunday on Marketing Live. It was just like, you know, there is that stigma that people who have been following me for such a long time, they're they are afraid. People are afraid that I'm going to lose that because I've been. Because it's not just because I've, I've gone so into doing digital that I'm picking up stuff quickly and that I'm adapting that their people are afraid, are legitimately afraid that I will stop like traditional stuff. And I'm like, there will, there will never come a time where I will not, where I will just flat out stop picking up, uh, picking up the pen stop uh stop uh opening my sketchbook pick up a pen and start drawing there will never be a time like that going back to your I, roots yeah no I, I i have i have done i have dedicated at least what feels like eight nine years of my life to to doing this i'm willing to dedicate another 10 years if needed to learn digital and to be able to do the stuff i want to do I'm yeah, you know, you kids, have to I'm look not at losing it like that. that. I'm not losing that. That traditional, like, it's like that thing where it's like people, and, and, and people say this, like, your traditional stuff, like, while the, the digital stuff is growing, you know, the traditional work, 
that speaks to people. It, yeah. it, there's a there's a sense of emotion there. There's a sense of feeling there that it touches. That we, and, and I know you get that same feeling, Tam. It's just like that same thing. It was just like you do something on hand and paper. It actually speaks to people. It actually yeah. speaks. To, it actually hits people in the heart. It hits people. It understands it. You mm-hmm. know. It's a whole nother layer, if you will. I am not opposed to digital art by any means. I, I myself have gotten into digital artwork and trying to take my uh, chibis to an, another level, right? But there is something, and while it's beautiful and I like it, there is something about having like tangible items in your hands, feeling the roughness of the paper, struggling through the flow of the the marker, the pen, sharpening your pencil. There is something that connects you deeper, in my personal opinion, uh, to traditional artwork, whether it's clay, you know, sculpting, because we have all this 3D artwork now, which is absolutely fantastic, but there's a difference Mm -hmm. between doing it with the clay, marble, Again, painting, drawing, things like that, that digital artwork cannot recreate. It just right. cannot. It's not exactly right. the same experience. You're not you're not accidentally breaking your pencil on a digital art pad, you know? And, <laughs> so, and, 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 <laughs> right. And and to kind of kind of contrast kind of what you're saying is that kind of where you, kind of how you got into digital art in comparison to traditional to Digital has always been something like where you said you've liked seeing digital is like for me personally, because I follow and support so many digital artists now mm-hmm. that I've always been wanting to try to emulate stuff digital and do it traditional. I've always been trying to emulate and the stuff I, I, yes. I get inspired from is digital work. Mostly yeah. digital work as I learned from is that and this is something I've always wanted to do and it's not my first rodeo in fact i have i've done digital before long long time ago long before youtube long before i even started a youtube channel or even thought about well actually this is my third youtube channel but not long before i could even you know this time of youtube because i used to do digital art back in college um and after our college, I used to do vector work on Illustrator all the time. Oh, so okay. and I was proficient about that. So for me here it doesn't feel like I'm it 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 doesn't feel like I'm relearning digital. It feels like okay. I'm learning it brand new. Oh, that's okay. what it feels like for me, you know? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe because I've been cool? away from it for such so, a long time, like six, seven years. And so much know? has changed. Yeah. Like, the game has changed. It's interesting you were saying like you look at digital and you try to recreate it in the in the as I, I like to say the tangible. Um exactly. and yeah. <laughs> It's interesting too because like before I really understood like digital art and things like that, I would see digital art and thought that they were paintings. Mm-hmm. And I would judge myself saying like when I tried to paint, it just wouldn't look that way and I couldn't figure it out. Same. And I, I was like, how in the world do they get it so smooth? How do they do it like this? How do they get the lines to look so incredibly smooth? And, and so- then I realized this is digital artwork, which again, mm-hmm. nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I was trying to com- <laughs> compare fine you art. Compare. To- <laughs> and, and this really thing is you can't. And you can't. And you um, can't. And- somebody had asked a little while ago, do we get to vote at the end? Whose is better? And we were talking about this before um, the show is that it's not exactly going to be so much. I think this might come from an artist's eye, maybe from non artists. You could judge it by whose is better. But when you're course. using two different mediums, you really can't say which one's better. <laughs> Besides, Tab the wins this one because, you know. Uh, it's, well, it's I, I'm going to try, like, challenges. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, by default. <laughs> The only reason that I win is because this is actually painting. So, um, <laughs> yummy. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not going to try to counterplay on that one. Uh, somebody was saying, what is your take on IA art? And wow, AI that, art. That's, that's a whole nother can of worms there. Um, okay. Phew. Are you asking, is, are you asking, um, both of us or are you just asking Tabitha? If you want to ask Tab, to, you know, but better buckle up, Buttercup, because she, uh, she she has yeah, quite we, the opinion. There's on it. A, yeah, there's a there's a war I, raging. I will we, say. Yeah, I can go into a long discussion about that because it is it is absolutely crazy right now. Um. um yeah, go ahead. If you want to go first, share you your go okay. 
Might so, be safer that way before I share mine. <laughs> for as crazy, and I, I'm going to say my, st- I'm going to keep my, and I have kept this stance since. Mm-hmm. For as advanced as it gets, for as, I don't have a dog in this fight, really. Mm-hmm. I completely understand both. I understand both points. I understand both sides. I completely understand right. and sympathize with the people who are strong against it because there is a very, very strong movement against it now because it's getting because it's getting better. It's getting better yeah. by the second. And it's always been that looming fear. And the thing is, it's and the thing is, is that I know I'm gonna, I don't want to try to sound all doom and gloom and say this, but it's inevitable. The genie is out of the box at this point. Right. Maybe that just went, yeah, the genie is out of the box. You cannot put it back in. You cannot put the genie back in the bottle anymore. Um, that being said, it's here to stay. I yeah. think, I think, I, I legitimately do believe that you can use AI programs like Stable Diffusion, like Mid Journey. You can use those programs to help you, to help better artists. It's just there have been a lot of bad apps. There's been a lot of bad apples and a lot of people who are going to use this, especially corporations who will use this as replacement. Even it goes even so far as the fact that you've had sites like even with uh what was it? Um Art Station, DeviantArt, who are oh, yeah. like changing their policies, changing their policies to either push AI art up forward or have to force everyone to have their work be integrated into the AI, their AI art program, and they can't opt out of it. Mm. Now, in DeviantArt's case, DeviantArt got immense backlash from that. And I think they had to backtrack, and so did ArtStation, too, if I I, I double-check on that. But it's... It is an inevitable thing, and it has caused this just this, such this big movement of just everybody being anti, you know, AI art, anti everything, anti AI uh, generated art and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I say this just because one of the people that I, one of the people that I know, and I know you probably know as well, is Mr. Grant Gregory, who is, who's all about the, all about the AI art and everything. I actually don't he know specializes. That name. Okay, okay, okay. No. Uh, but one of the persons I know is Mr. Grant Gregory. He span, uh, uh, specializes in AI art and such like that. You know, having those long discussions with, having no, that discussion with him and such like that. And it's like, I am neither for nor against it. And I can see it used as a beneficial tool to help artists out. Mm-hmm. However, there's a caveat. Yeah. There are Big going one. to be people. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's a huge one. It's, it's a, a huge one. one. Is that there are going to be people who are going to take advantage of it. There have been instances where you've seen um, big artists, you've seen artists get caught. And I mean, seriously, they got caught using AI art mm. or doing something based on AI art. Because it's like. Or like looks- that article where the guy won the prize for his mm-hmm. painting, but like- it was digitally manufactured or like artificially it's like, manufactured. It, because it's like. This is the like everything is too perfect. This mm-hmm. is too perfect to, to to say that this is all done by hand. And there's even an, if there was, and I want to, I, I, I don't know if you've heard about this, but there was an instance where you've had an artist on Reddit, an artist get banned on Reddit because uh, one of the biggest art subreddits because their piece looked too much like digital, too much like AI art. Oh. And they had to fight, and it caused a backlash. It caused a huge backlash. Wow. And I think they're still really from it because it's like, it's not AI generated. In fact, I will send you the PSD files myself, but the moderator was like, no, we don't believe you. This uh. is too good. And it's, it was condescending and insulting, and that sparked a big backlash to where they had to close down the biggest art subreddit on that platform. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I... I agree, like you said, that the the genie's out of the bo- uh, out of the bottle. Mm-hmm. There is no going. Go- there's no going back from this. I saw Jacob Ironside said after doing digital art for a while, it's maybe better artists with traditional art methods. Yeah, there are things that you can learn yes, it about does. it um, for sure. Where I have a, I don't have a problem with digital art. Okay, a- as a whole, um, because again, like I said, I use it. My issue with AR, I art, and I've I've done some research into this, listened to some people mm-hmm. about how they're trying to say it's okay. My, I in 
trying to say? You know, everybody has their opinions. So I'm just going to say mine is the fact that AI art, no matter how you cut and slice it, mm -hmm. is stealing. I know that people say, well, blah, 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 generating here. You, the computers do not fabricate stuff on their own. They mm -hmm. have to get it from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the slightest, just color variation, mm -hmm. it is not made. And I know that the, they make this argument that photography is essentially like AI art. That's it not, is, uh, it is not the same wrong. thing. No, it's the AI. Um, they're it's saying the, that any time that you argument, create actually. a painting or a drawing, it's technically stealing because you got inspired by somebody else. This is false. Because exactly. I. I could look at the sky and paint a picture of the sky. It's never going to be exactly the same, number one. And it's not actually taking the sky or somebody else's sky <laughs> and creating that. And again, I know, like I said, they, they talk about the ins and the outs. But if you get down to the nitty gritty of AI art. Also, I would like to put this out. AI artwork technically to me is not necessarily art. I, I'm big on definitions. I can be very much a purist, but it's technically not art. To me, it is literature in mm -hmm. picture, because from what I understand, in order to create I, AI art, you have to type in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You don't actually click and drag and you and don't create the contrast. Is, yeah. And this is where that looming fear comes in because, and it is a looming fear, is that you have a, a lot of professionals are probably going to be out of a job the more it gets advanced. It's always been that looming thing behind it. Like I can, like I said, I can see it used for great. I can see it used for, for efficient tools such as like say like in terms of like, for example, concept art. So like right. a company or studio wants to put some concept art out, they can use that as a much more efficient tool versus how trying to, you know, versus right. maybe just hiring or commissioning a concept artist to be able to do it for them. You know. But see, but there's the problem. Then somebody's yeah, lost a job mm -hmm. because of that. And that's the part that also gets me about AI art is that you mm -hmm. are, and I've seen, I've seen people and I understand where they're coming from. Like you said, genie's out of the bottle on so many things. This is just because this is my occupation that I'm also right. obviously most passionate about it because somebody was making the argument saying, well, if you're that upset about AI art, then you might as well be upset about the factories that are manufacturing clothes, stealing jobs from seamstresses. And I'm like, I... you're right. Honestly, yeah. if you think about it, you're right. Right. Anytime a machine is creating something that humans, you know, used to make, technically, yeah, you are stealing jobs. But of course, that then there is there is a balance to be had because then you open up new jobs for people to engineer things, craft things. Mm -hmm. So now you've got people that are going to go into computer design or whatever like that, or, or uh, I don't know all the words, but basically they're right. going to technicians that are going to learn how to <laughs> manufacture. What? I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Rogue Dizzy's comment. <laughs> we are trying. <laughs> we are trying something different today, Rogue. Um, I'm sorry, Rogue. <laughs> I told Makani before when he suggested this, I was a little bit close-minded to it because I'm like, it's, and, and look yeah. at you now. <laughs> I know. Look at me now. I mean, I still haven't told him that I'm closed-minded to it. I'm just being nice, but no, I, I'm curious yeah, exactly, to see how it's exactly. going to be. Give me, give, give, give me that false feel of, uh, give me that false sense of uh, accomplishment. <laughs> right, that's right. That's what I do. I'm all about the false. But no, like you said, I do see that there are perks to it. I was talking to somebody who said that they would mm -hmm. love to, or they considered using it for their thumbnails because yeah. they are a business person. They are not an artist. So this is just efficiency right. on a business aspect. I get that. Very true. At the same mm -hmm. time, you've got you've done again run into the problem of the fact that it's not technically your artwork. It is stealing from somebody somewhere, right. and you've just lost or robbed somebody of a job. You know, right? And this is just, and I guess for me personally, it's just I just I just don't have a dog in this fight because I'm neither for mm -hmm. nor against it. It's just because I, I guess for me personally, it's just like I don't see it as. I guess I don't see this situation as like such a clear cut black and white that there is some similar right. gray area in, in there. Yeah. Right. That's well, just me. I, and it's the same. I, I, exactly. It's one of those things where it's not necessarily right or wrong, but is mm -hmm. it beneficial? Right. And but so, it's going to be you, but you can see, but mm -hmm. you can see where it can go wrong. You can see clearly where it can go wrong. 
because again, I don't look at AI artwork as fine artwork or traditional artwork or however you want to, or really look at it as artwork at all. It is literature in picture form. So right. I think it needs to go into its own bracket. I think it needs to go into its own mm -hmm. kind of category. It is because you have to learn how to word things just so in order to get the picture to come to fruition the way that exactly. you see it in your mind. So for me, that's not necessarily art. You could say that poetry and literature is, is a different form of art. We could nitpick about that. But as far as like art, you know, when people mm -hmm. think about artwork, they don't necessarily think about literature. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's mm -hmm. how I see it. And here's the thing. And it, 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 I know it, it sounds all doom and gloom, when you, you know, in this talk discussion about art, despite how I feel about it, despite how Tabitha feels about this, mm -hmm. I stand that I don't think you will you will ever be phased out. I don't think artists will ever be phased out of, right. you know, their job or their profession because of the emergence of AI art. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think I, there will I be kind of an, a wax and waning of it, to be honest. I mm -hmm. think everybody, because everything's a trend. So people are going to jump on this right. because it's exciting, it's easy, and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we have this appreciation for because, what people did in the olden days. <laughs> right, because of what, it's, what, what my friend Ginger Ninja was saying was that the, he kind of sees this as like a phasing trend like you saw with, like you see with uh, NFTs and mm -hmm. cryptocurrency and such like that. But it seems to be that it's like a, you know, it's definitely a, it's definitely a, it's definitely a growing trend and it's, and there's a, but there's, but with this growing trend, there's a growing pushback. <laughs> there's a growing amount of pushback yeah. towards it, you know? And rightly so, because, okay, somebody else was talking about the fact that um, is AI can also create paragraphs and basically all this stuff so what's stopping kids from using this stuff for school and honestly it doesn't help you at all i i'm one of those people honestly i don't want to say i i, I oppose grammarly mm -hmm. but i kind of do low-key do because mm -hmm. it steals the opportunity of you learning okay because it's correcting your stuff for you it's suggesting what you should be doing for you this is mm -hmm. stuff that we should be already knowing by the time mm -hmm. we're in seventh grade we right. should know how to properly punctuate we should know that we don't end our sentences with prepositions formally at least when we write stuff down maybe when we <laughs> maybe when we do when we speak but you know that's where each where we all come from put it, put it this way put it this way you still put it this way you could you still i still put proper punctuations even when I tweet, <laughs> it's still a I try to, ideas. okay? Like the semicolon is my best friend. I try exactly. to use it regularly, okay? Because most people use it like a colon and that drives me crazy. <laughs> um, it just drives me crazy. But this is the, a, the, 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 the dash... <laughs> I'm all about the dash. <laughs> right, because sometimes you look, at the, you look at those tweets that people make and it's just like, okay, first off, spell check. Spelling. Grammar, please. Uh, can you rewrite this tweet so we can understand it, please? Proper punctuations. <laughs> and I mean, I we all understand. We're human. We'll, we'll make a saying. mistake. We we misspell Twitter. We would love an edit feature. Yes, we would. Yes, uh, we not don't just have to pay not for. just not just for Twitter Blue, but for everybody. Uh, and, uh, but like, even if it's for like thirty seconds after a tweet, that's like that's what. Right. Okay, <laughs> right? Make an right. edit typo. There you go. But it's just like it's not helping us as a society. It's making us dumber, in my opinion. Well, that and TikTok, but that's, that's well, great. that's as far as that's what is entertaining us and and yeah, mm -hmm. our values and our morals. But as far as these these apps that are helping people, and I get it, they help people. I know people that are not from mm -hmm. this country, and so their English is broken. They want to use apps like this for helping them to. <laughs> And now I sound like I'm foreign or helping them to create, <laughs> uh, so, you know, and um, I understand that. So that's why I say like, I'm against it, but I'm not against it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, like you said before, I see the value in it or the, or the benefit, but at the same time, it's hurting us. Right. It's, it's really, is hurting us because it's, as far as Grammarly is concerned, it's teaching us that we don't have to learn. Computer does it for us. Grammar. So I kind of see that in a way with AI artwork, it's teaching us that we don't have to learn how much pressure to apply to our brush. We don't have to learn what colors 
um, work well on the palate. We don't have to learn about um, believe believe so me when I say believe me when I say that proper grammar and punctuations can save your life. That's right because it can either save your we life, will eat grandma me. or we will eat grandma. So exactly, <laughs> it can save your life in some situations. Hello, stunning and brave Megatron, and it's the memes of destruction. We're go. just getting down to the nitty gritty. So all of that being said, I hope everybody understands. You know, you you do what you do. And exactly. we've got our opinions about it. We as artists, we of course have strong opinions about AI art. But let's just talk about my Kenny for a second. So what got you know. started into oh boy <laughs> your artwork? Let's let's just do this. Let's let's get uh, into it. let's yeah. let's learn. I feel like I feel like do you want the short form or do you want the long form? Because this is gonna span the two hour lifespan that you plan to uh, have this stream go for. I'll just turn <laughs> off the stream if you keep going. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, what you do, what you do is just let the stream go while right. I keep talking and just let it go overnight. I'll, just I'll go the, get me some the, food. Yeah, get some food and I'm still talking and I'm still going. Come and back it's just to, really, oh, still going. I'm still going. It's like, damn, you got a hundred likes. Like <laughs> 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 the super chats off the watch. It was like, yeah. Tabitha, you got a bunch of super chats right now. Do you want to? <laughs> I'll take care <laughs> of it. I'll her. get my manager to take care of it. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay, well, maybe I need to re configure my wording maybe so like just uh, so what, let me okay. let me kind of narrow it down so how young were you when you first got started with artwork um that's what everybody always as, likes to know as about what, artists uh, as what uh some sources will say specifically uh uh, uh, I'll call her mama maki <laughs> mama maki so mama maki um and as far as it goes, as far as I could pick up a pencil or pick up a crayon, which is like two years old. Okay. Um, I did. I just. I did not. Okay. It was. It was. I guess we're say. I. I had no idea. I had no idea I had this talent until a. Uh, until a. Uh, until a project in fourth grade. When we were doing ocean life and i had to study up on sea turtles and i did a and i just drew a sea turtle from a uh i just drew a sea turtle from a uh, uh from a book i i got at the library and okay. everybody was so amazed including my elementary school art teacher was amazed how accurate i was able to draw the sea turtle and i think oh, that was great. where i kind of started to realize like oh wow i do have this talent i, didn't like, realize, I can like, do it i can make nothing I I or something draw. out of nothing I like, yeah. Wait, really i can draw i didn't know that, that was that's such a great of, feeling yeah it's such a weird feeling and then you know fifth and sixth grade i still kept doodling and stuff and you know even through high school and stuff but i think it was just after high school i started uh, after high school, well, it wasn't really after high school because, as you, you know, I was already set on wanting to go to an art school at the college and wanted to. It originally, uh, I, I got a, I have an associate's degree in graphic design. Okay. Um, originally, I wanted to get into game design uh, and animation and stuff like that, but I think I kind of chickened out and just <laughs> stuck with graphic design. <laughs> I went to college for graphic design too and became a painter. So, yeah, but I kind of chickened out. But I found out I felt I kind of discovered kind of a. It's funny, you know. What the funny thing is that this uh, this uh, this past year, I have dis I feel like I've rediscovered my love for graphic design. I feel like uh. I discovered a new love for it now, and it's like wow, all that's coming to good use now. All that is coming to use for real. But all art types of artwork really help each other out. I've mm -hmm. noticed that graphic design actually helped me with makeup. Exactly. Because the tiniest adjustment, the tiniest pixel could alter the picture. <laughs> well, and it's just like layouts and typography and stuff like that. It was just like, I never realized some of the things that I, that I absolutely love and certain styles that I prefer mm -hmm. all came from that. And I started just like, taking that and adapting it to what I do on YouTube and what I do and stuff like that on my Twitch and stuff like that. So I have like these, you know, these, you know, creative looking, uh, creative looking setup for my YouTube channel, my Twitch channel and all that, you know, coming from learning from graphic design and learning. It's from handy, just, right? Cause we don't have to yeah, hire just, artists. You, well, you just, <laughs> well, well that you just kind of, when you learn graphic design, it's just like, you start to appreciate mm -hmm. the things around you. And the stuff that you like growing up, you start wondering 
what was it that you like that so much? You're like, oh, wow, I like the layout of this. I like the font. I like all this typography. I right? like this clean layout. I was like, I want to take this and adapt it to what uh, adapt it to what I do now. And I found such a use for it at my job. And I do an office job. And I just do an office job. But I've been able to make templates and such like yeah. that to kind of spruce up the office a bit. So we are the sprucers aren't we people exactly ask you, like what do you but, my favorite is when people are like what do you think about this i'm like well i would suggest this this and this yeah we're not doing that like, no they're just like i don't know how i don't know how to do this you you, <laughs> you just did you just thought out of the box i was like okay you got this I and they like, were like oh, we're not do, we're not doing it we're staying in the box yeah it, well, it, well it was it goes to the point where i was like oh a point was like i think even like my a supervisor were all like okay We've established that Mockety, Mockety is the guy who can make everything look flashy and fancy and stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's not try to tell. It's like I could teach somebody to how to use like something like uh like an InDesign or like a publisher, just like graphic design mm -hmm. software, but I can't teach them how to. You have to have like a mindset. To be right. able to do that kind of things, you have to have a specific mindset. You have to think a system. You have to look at the world and everything around you a specific way. Right. And yes. that's something you can't really, that's something you can't teach. Yeah, you have to either know it. And even when you know it, you have to learn and cultivate it. Yeah. <laughs> Your life experiences help you with composition, with balance. Exactly. So it's just like that kind of thing. Because oh, we think uh, differently. Artists don't see, most artists, well, I would say all artists don't see things at face value. They see mm -hmm. work. They see, yeah, again, the contrast, the color choices, the the go. emotion many a times. So I got the so I got the flats done. But um, all right, well, let's have a look. <laughs> I got the flats done. There got you go. the flat. So, it looks like a uh, uh, like a coloring book. Kinda, yeah. It's yeah. Not until I still had the shading and everything, and I'm just like, like this is just a sketch, okay? So I'm not gonna be fancy with this. I'm just gonna be like, okay, I'll apply maybe a couple layers of shading throughout. But meanwhile, my colors for Mario, it's like he got some kind of fake tan going on. You know, I tried to be close. I could, I could have done more Paper Mario kind of style, just because that's much more cuter looking. That's what I think I was trying to go for. You know, <laughs> ah, I think it's great. I mean, you know right away who it is when you look at it. So. <laughs> I was actually trying to find out. I was I was able to find the right color. I was able to match the right colors for the Goomba and Piranha Plant that I spent the past couple of minutes trying to figure out the right colors for. Oh, don't even talk to me about colors. I'm over here on the struggle bus trying to mix them myself. Listen, okay? listen, like... listen. We could do a color talk that's probably go for like four, five, six hours, and we'll still have plenty yeah. to talk about because Let it's, me it's talk an about ongoing. My colors. <laughs> but. Well if it depends on how you look at colors too. My college teacher, my my uh -huh. photography teacher told me that I seem to see colors more vibrantly than most people. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but if that is, I'll use it as either a blessing or a handicap, depending on what situation I find myself. Exactly. Exactly. That's <laughs> how could I best see, utilize see, this? See, exactly. That's no, but to kind of get back on track with me was that um I didn't start taking my work seriously until after college. Yeah. Um, and the weird thing was, was that um, I don't know if people remember this, but uh, I know people remember this. So because there've been so many different like social media platforms trying to rival Twitter, or Instagram, but anybody remember Google plus. Google. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It was one of Google's many failed attempts along cool. with the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, the glasses. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I remember that with the guy on the bench saying, sell it, sell it, buy it. Exactly. <laughs> now I do feel old, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, so I I realized had a when I started my I guess I started my YouTube in 24 my third YouTube account in 2014 or Google account and had a YouTube channel and then had a Google Plus account and it said I had like 90 to 100 followers. I was like, wait, are you have a followers already? Ah. And then I just I guess I use that social media to just kind of take that, take stuff seriously and start posting there, start posting to Instagram and in 2017 and such like that. And, uh, but it's just, it's all been a journey for me because, you know, discovering that it is such, it's part of the reason that I kept doing traditional was because of a digital artist who I've, adored their traditional work that it just got me to start using ink okay <laughs> and the thing that i discovered was that people just 
you can build such a, a huge name of just doing traditional work. I didn't realize that. Because people I think it's realize. magical that you're able to create something by hand. I think yeah. that's what it is. And it was just, I, I, I was inspired by that. And I just like took that and made, took serious about that. I didn't think I would have, I didn't think people would come out and commission me on stuff like that. I didn't think people would tell me, people would uh, tell me this, that, and a third. I didn't think that, you know, I would get like gigs or stuff like that just on traditional stuff. I do. Mm -hmm. I didn't think for, I didn't, I did not think for the entire life of me that my own work would get would get turned into would get immortalized as a tattoo oh okay i never thought that would happen but it sure enough it did <laughs> yeah that somebody likes it so much that they yeah they want it forever on their body mm -hmm. and it's finding and having a having a friend and having a friend uh having a, a norwegian friend who is so who is a tattoo artist herself and she did the exact drawing in every exact line <laughs> to make it happen i was like this is insane wow i yeah. cannot believe my work got immortalized as a tattoo i cannot believe it's, it's going to be on somebody's arm for the rest of their life now with the style of artwork you know, i don't know what again we we said earlier that i have not tapped into your um folder of all that you're doing but i do notice that you do seem to gravitate towards these very uh luscious ladies here what what it's what it, so that's a long story it okay. is a very long story and it's a very personal story and i think at some point i will probably do a sketch diary of it because oh that'd be cool it's it's such this weird mindset and it's so tied into what goes on what goes on right now in pop culture and stuff and the you know the stuff that we all talk about mm -hmm. it's so it, it's so interwoven in that and it's it's so hard to kind of describe but um to kind of to kind of break this down in the in probably the better way is that um i used i had a hard time doing bodies in mm -hmm. in college Anatomy was my. It's hard. <laughs> hard, it still is. But I think it was just over time, I just doing that kind of art, just being kind of interested in that style of art and such, and having such that general genuine appreciation for female form that mm -hmm. it helped me with anatomy and helped me understand so much more. And how they understand the kind of where my voice is, where I was able to express myself and my style, you know, because I do see that as a personal form of, you know, I know a lot of people was just like, you know, freedom of speech is like, I believe in freedom of expression. And that's how I express myself. That's how I've always expressed myself because I've been so inspired by that because I've been such a, it, it's, it's hard to describe it because it's so personal to me and it's, right. and it's like, Okay. And, and even seeing it in a way that feels like it's suitable for YouTube and such like that. But there is a reason why I do the art I do. And there was a reason why that I always try to make it feel like it's a genuine appreciation to it. And that I've discovered, you know, the kind of art I do, it's, 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 it's connected people. Okay. That's the thing. It has. I, I never realized that. I never realized that people were inspired by that in the same way I was inspired by that, you know? I, artwork can definitely get people on an intellectual <laughs> and emotional level. And I think it's it's always kind of funny, or I say funny, but more interesting that the fact that if there's a stigma with artistry, right? You know, it's not a, re it's not a real job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh hey keely ciao. hey keely hello um they you know it's it's not it's not it's a dangerous job right because it's not secure and no, it never it's, usually is <laughs> it never really is you know yeah it's not it's not a real job and all this kind of stuff and it's funny because to me like i was looking thinking back in 2020 right when this whole fiasco of what is essential workers mm -hmm. 
what a slap in the face to so many different people. But I'm like, you understand that it was an artist that made all of your signs that uh, said, wear a mask, six feet, here, all that kind a, of stuff. Here's, here's, here's the thing about that. You know, when the lockdowns happened and all that, I was like, okay, I am, that just, that just gave me a reason to just start doing YouTube. That was just like yeah. my reason to start doing this. I was like, because I never would stop being busy. I never mm-hmm. stopped working. Even during the pandemic, I never stopped. I was like, okay, I can focus more on my art then. Right. And then I was like, right. okay, because I'm in this such this great community, amazing community of people, you know, former TFM here. And and I will and I will and I will say that I left that I left that group a long time ago. But you know, I found so many great people through that. And because I've already had experiences. With I, I I I I learned video editing like during my high when I was like a junior in high school I learned video editing and I've learned it by myself okay. I learned it by myself so that video editing experience came in into factor mm-hmm. the the fact that I I've done I've done time lapses on Instagram in the in the shorts or i guess it's called the shorts feature or the reels feature the or the reels, story yeah. stories no it was instagram stories i did time lapses all the time so it was natural for me to just to be able to do that um to be able to do that on on uh, be able to do that as a do time lapse videos so this that was nothing new for me um right what but um as i was getting involved and in, uh it was uh because we're getting because now we're gonna kind of getting into the YouTube uh, mm-hmm. the YouTube kind of where my origins come from and um, I was I was uh, a big I was big into the I was big following and because kind of me like a lot of other people here you know it was the you know it was the the fallout uh, from uh, the last Jedi mm. and just kind of everybody's reactions to it you know <laughs> the movie uh, that made everybody go crazy for whatever reason and, and it and then also it's kind of the movie that kind of started a lot of channels because of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's just kind of how Disney, 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 you know, I, we, we have so much, as much as we all hate Disney, we have to thank them because, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff that we do. Came this, is from tr- <laughs> I mean, this is they, true. Um, I don't want to admit it, but yeah, Disney definitely had a hand in that. Um, well, By dividing us, they united us. <laughs> yeah, I found a lot of channels. I follow a lot of people, and uh, I remember the first people who, um, the first specifically uh, two people who shouted me out for the first time and who discovered what I was doing was Jeff of World Class Bullshitters and John Talks. Mm-hmm. Um, they both shouted me out. John Talks even more so. You know, he he made me a mod on his channel and I started learning how to mod. Um, and that's how I kind of got around by other different, I got around enough for different channels by just being a mod. And right. then um, I got a chance, I got a couple of times, I got a chance to be on stream, uh, be on stream and talking and chatting with people. And that's kind of where I kind of got that confidence up to where on uh, August, mm-hmm. on Sunday, August 23rd, 2020, I decided, you know what? Let's try this out. Let's Uh do a live drawing stream. And of course, that's where Mockney Live was born. That's where the channel, that really was where the channel, that really was the day that my channel was born. Because I did time lapses beforehand, but that's where. I guess it I, it. I became the person that I am now, the person everybody ref- knows me as. Yeah, I mean, 2020 did a lot for a lot of people. Suddenly, mm-hmm. we, you know, those things that we say, we if we just had some time, we would get around to it. Mm-hmm. Well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we did, and, and uh, it was so so weird. It was like it was such a weird thing that you know, 2020 is just you know that was a bad year for everybody. But I can't deny that what 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 it came out of was my YouTube journey started there. Well, you There's know, like so they say, every dark lining. cloud has a silver lining kind of thing. We just, I met so many amazing people mm-hmm. in the, the past two or three years. I've been doing this, this platform, this, uh, this YouTube platform. It's just, well, I think 2020 definitely taught a lot of people. Number one, 
get creative, how to get creative yeah. with stuff, whether it was their job, um, being with their kids, all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, for creatives, you know, if you can't really go out and about, like, where can I show my art? Where can I do stuff? And so there's, you know, obviously there's Instagram and everything. And people just really yeah. started realizing I can, I could really go all out with this. And um, yeah, it was a, a yeah, lot of that good. Was a weird thing. Actually. That was so weird, though. It was just, but it it was, and I I I don't, and I I I have to thank it for that. You know, if it wasn't mm -hmm. for the pandemic happening, I would probably still be just sticking to, you know, sticking to just doing. I I, I do believe that even if even if it wasn't the if it even the circumstances wasn't that the case, it would still probably end up with me starting a youtube channel just because i followed so many people within the community within the fellowship within the gathering as you know whatever you guys call it the old <laughs> you know back in the early you know tfm days and stuff like that it's just like i followed all these people and i was like these people probably would have inspired me to start my own channel anyway right so it probably was inevitable that i was going to start a youtube channel but there is something special about doing it yourself like taking yeah. that jump and just doing it yourself rather than having a bunch of people cheering and applauding and then they come later on and they yeah it, it yeah it's just it's it's definitely was a life-changing experience for me it is definitely a life-changing experience and I'm, I'm grateful for that so um do you like i said like pretty much on your your streams i see you working with the ink and all that kind of stuff like what inspires you to like create what you're creating in that moment do you try to think well way in advance or do you just kind of do with whatever whatever comes to you How it's does that work? i do it usually in advance i'm okay. usually kind of playing them I'm, I'm usually i sketch stuff out before i start so it's usually a rare occasion where i'll start a, a drawing live mm -hmm. well i'll just do it i'll just do it beforehand just because i have something planned out and just have an idea or just something whatever and i just went ahead and i just go to town with it um, I do have a process. I do have a I do have a process, and I uh, usually stick with that process. I don't usually deviate too much from it. And but <laughs> I've learned, I've grown, I, I've learned that I've grown, and it's just that's just kind of how my mind. A, a lot of it, when you when you realize it, you kind of think about it, especially kind of when you see other artists do kind of their thing and come kind of yours. You just like a lot of it can just come down to the fact that. That's just how your mind works. That's just how yeah. you do things. It's just how your mind is. Right. You're different, but not a freak. Yeah. Yeah. You're di you think you just you just kind of have this different mindset and you plan things out differently versus people who just throw something together. It's just sometimes it's hard for me to throw something together. Mm -hmm. And but because it, it, it for me, throwing something together means I have to completely turn my brain off. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how annoying that is to try even yes. even to try to even to even attempt to turn your brain off? I do. It just, it just, it's I hard. Can't, I can't. <laughs> it's just like I just think I'll just be thinking about it and planning it out as I'm going along. It's like, OK, oh, that's why we're the crazy folk, because we never stop thinking, you know, we're just mm -hmm. so hungry. I think one of the ways that kind of helps me uh, turn my brain off from thinking is um having like if i play video games uh, it's kind of yeah. hard to think about my artwork and you know like i was just recently finished bioshock mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to be thinking about artwork when these creepy people are roaming the hallways <laughs> see i disagree you find you, you disagree you could find inspiration from that <laughs> I'm not saying I couldn't, but it kind of like if inspiration <laughs> strikes me, it will strike me. And don't don't be yeah, it's true. Like I mean, I will look at the artistry. Like I'll be like, my goodness, look how they designed this stuff. But as far as like me, what could I be doing? I need to remember that. Let me write that down. Like if I if I'm playing video games, I don't really unless like maybe even Skyrim. Like when I was playing Skyrim, I might have um, I might have been obsessed with some of the artwork that was in there, but like it, it kind of comes and goes and waves. So like you said, you can never really turn it off. But I guess I guess what I should but, say is I kind of like dim it or you know. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, though, Tabitha. Do you even want to turn it off? I know because you might miss a moment. You never <laughs> want. To, yeah, you don't want to turn it off. 
sometimes you always want to keep it on and just that's how I am. It's just you always want to keep it on because sometimes it, it hits you. Yeah, and you don't even realize it. would be it. nice to turn it off every now and then, like when you're going to sleep. It is. It uh, is. That's why I listen to audiobooks. They help me to focus on one thing so that my brain's not trying to focus on seven. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it doesn't always work. Um, <laughs> it doesn't always work. Oh, always. <laughs> Which, well, you know, the bad thing is that sometimes it actually makes it worse. Like if I'm trying to distract myself with something, it actually causes I... me to focus better. What is it, that? Distraction <laughs> is. What is even that? That's like when I go to church. Okay, uh -huh. if my if my pastor's in the chat, I'm sorry. Um, but like when when the preaching's going on and I'm supposed to be tuned in, I'm listening and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. I can't. I'll actually get some of the best inspiration when I'm supposed to be focused on something else. Even in school, well, you notice kids turn into awesome artists when they're doodling because they're bored. Yeah, I, I have to have something in front of me. I have to be doing something in front of me. Because if I don't, then I'll start dozing off. That's yeah. that's, that's, that's my thing. It's just I, I will start dozing off and I'm not doing something in front of me. So for me, it's like either bringing up my sketchbook or I'm playing with my phone or something. I need to I need to have something. In, <laughs> I know. I've wanted want. to tell my pastor and be like, look, I, uh, I don't want to It keeps me focused. It does keep me focused and listening. Yeah, it's, it's just I, I – I, if I don't, I'm going to doze off immediately. It's like, it's, so I can't it's not like I'm not stream. listening to you. In fact, I'm trying harder to pay attention to you. That's why I'm drawing and not looking see, at see, you. That's the class, see, that's the classic excuse. It works every time with me. <laughs> Rogue <laughs> says, I never paid attention to church. Well, then maybe your church just didn't have a interesting enough I, I have <laughs> I doodled a lot. I drew a lot when I was growing up in church. All yeah, time. I don't know what it but is. It, 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 but you know what? The thing is, it, it's advanced so much to where I'm just taking my sketchbook everywhere I go. And mm -hmm. I draw people, people have made people keep asking me, how do you draw so well on the train? It's like I've learned to have a steady hand. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned to have a very steady hand. That's what I tell people. I'm like, these muscles, they're not for strength, they're for precision. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they, keep, they actually keep my hand steady when on a moving train <laughs> to and from work every day. Um, Rogue says, plus I always need to cough once I'm told to be quiet. You know, there are little triggers, it's for sure. I mean, humans by nature don't like to be told to do really much of exactly. anything, right? And so there's little triggers that will happen um, for sure when you get told to be still, don't say anything, look serious, keep your eyes down. <laughs> <laughs> always, always look serious. <laughs> Why do you always look serious? Though? This, this, uh... Then we're lost. Yeah, they'd be like, right. what is it called? Jeremy Renner resting face? Is that mm -hmm. what it's called? Yeah. Exactly. My brother it's has just... it. <laughs> it. Yeah, it's just like a thing. It's just like I'm always, I'm always taking my stuff with me and stuff. And it's like, this has become so much of my life. This has become so much of my life in that I've you know, a while back, I've I've understood how much that, for me, a lot of what I want to achieve is very much a personal journey that I'm willing to spend the rest of my life learning because, mm -hmm. for me, that's an achievement. For me, that's 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 means something. Um, you know, that's why I call. That's why I don't. I I don't think of myself. I used to think of myself as a semi pro, just because okay. I'm not really a pro. Just because I don't I don't do any professional work. Right. But I've, but for a longest time, I've adopted the journeyman mantra because it really is a journey. Because this really is a journey for me. It never stops. You never stop learning. Yeah, yeah it's an, always a journey, and it's always an experience for me. And that's why I see this. This is my journey for me. This is my. So life. where do you see Mackenzie draws in twenty twenty three? In twenty twenty three, I see myself at two K. I see, I see the channel at 2K. Oh, for sure. Growing. Oh, that's going to happen before June. It's going to happen before June. <laughs> well, it's got to happen. Well, it's got to happen before May because May is my birthday and I have a bet with my uh, with my co-host. 100 bucks <laughs> says I can get to 2K before May 7th. So okay. um. There you go, guys. For those that are <laughs> no, new and they don't see, know you. I guess, to ask, I guess to answer your question or ask your question, what do you mean is like as for the channel or as for gen in general? Yes. <laughs> okay, so for, for in general, and I guess I'll, guess I'll say in terms of an artistic journey, I see myself that in about 
hopefully by hopefully by October or so, mm-hmm. I can really be able to pull off some of the work that I've always been inspired by. Uh, that's part of the reason that? why I've I have so much. Okay. I have so many references. Okay. And I always save photos. Oh, of course. And I always love to look and inspect at stuff. I, I follow. I, I, I have. There have been. There are like a lot. Of, there's one artist that I have been following, that I have been supporting her Patreon for five years straight. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, her work has definitely always been an inspiration for me. And that was always part of the reason why I got a tablet. Was like what I want to achieve is the work that she does to okay. be able to achieve the level of work she does. I, I want you. to be able to learn how to do that. And I follow so many digital artists already that I, you know, I save their photos and I just like look in and I zoom in, I examine how they do this brushstroke, how they do this, how they do that. It's like, okay, I can figure this out. It's, it's, it's a trial error. I see myself being able to pull off the work that I've always wanted to do within, hopefully within like, a six month time. Okay. But in quarter, but to require that happening, you know, I have to do this every day. I have to spend time on this every single day. It's a job. Yeah. And don't treat it as a job. Treat it as a learning experience. Treat it as a chance to grow. And I'm that so too. happy that I'm doing that. You know, I see in terms of the channel, I see us at 2K. I see us getting. I see us. I, I legitimately do see this channel, my channel, getting fifty, not twenty-five, fifty channel members. Yeah, there you because go. Because what you okay? So what what you don't know, uh, Tabitha, is that when I have the channel members set up, I treat my channel members the way an artist treats their Patreon. Okay. So they get channel members. They get exclusive art from me in the term of b- monthly batches that I send out each month it is exclusive art you can't see anywhere else ah so i will do stuff for them i'll do requests stuff like that and i and i treat it like a patreon essentially and i like that format because it keeps me busy it keeps me it keeps me busy and occupied and that's kind of what i want i want to stay busy and i want to stay occupied and i want to stay uh not you know less on social media more on studying and picking up things and learning and improving of course that's what I love to do. In fact, when I'm, in fact, uh, in fact, probably after after we finish up here, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm going to be, um, uh, I'm gonna be finishing, I, I'm gonna be finishing something for my Twitch channel that I hope I can debut tonight. I did not uh, know you had a Twitch channel, otherwise I would have put that in the description box. Uh, yeah, my Twitch channel <laughs> is called uh, Mockney Type R. Okay. And it is, it is uh, primarily. Uh, racing and driving game focused channel because okay that's uh that's it's such it's a niche genre but it's a genre that I have been playing ever since for most of my life and because I have such a, a personal attachment to cars and such like that growing up you know that yeah that, that means a lot to me building something like that and you know dedicated to something like that it's like, like listen you and I say it's with Twitter it's like I say this with, I mean say this with Twitch, it's like, listen, if you're gonna build a gaming channel and such like that, it's like focus on playing the games that you actually want to play yourself that you're gonna enjoy doing. Not mm-hmm. because of whatever's trending, you know? And that's um, the same thing for art, you know. It's gonna do, do, that, do that, that makes do an that. interesting point. By the way, I want to say that uh, Rogue says, I wanna see McCann uh McKinney draw on a roller coaster. <laughs> I know, right? Just have the just have the steadiest hands imaginable. Oh, that would be, that would be like a superpower at that point. I know, right? But okay, so I've been hearing from different professional artists like AC, ADC, Art Attack, and stuff, and others like that, and they talk about like YouTube content. Let's kind of go there for a second. So, you 
uh, like I said, from what streams I have caught, hey, Matt Vader, good to see you. We Ooh. are working on Mario. We've got digital versus fine artwork here. Everything's good. And fine artwork's I, winning out because... I, I don't know about oh. that. We've got a little close-up of here, and he's putting some details in the gloves. I'm just shading, you know? It's just right. Well, that's what I'm doing right now currently as well. So we're going to just kind of see how this goes. A little different stream today. <laughs> But they were saying that if you really want to get serious about YouTube, you can't, it's not about making content that you want to do. It's about exactly. making content that other people want to see. So exactly. how, do you believe that? And if you do, I how do. do you balance that? It's a weird thing because yeah, you do want a content you want to do and the content people want to see. Um, the way I, you know, the way I kind of see it is that, you know, you read the room, you kind of understand what are people interested in. And I kind of look at like Twitter, like Twitter and Instagram is just like, you can build an audience on your work mm -hmm. in no matter what platform. So you can find that audience. Your work is going to find an audience. Right. Don't, don't ever try to seek out an audience. It's like, focus on your craft. If you focus on your craft, you continue to show that your craft is improving your audience is going to find you. Interesting. They're okay. going to find you. That's going to be, and I, I do believe that. And I think there's an audience for everything. And I think there's an audience for general things. And I think that, you know, despite, you know, YouTube's restrictions, there is, there, was that you laughing or something? I, I'm laughing, but I'm also, I've got my tape I'm rolling out. I'm trying oh, okay. to washi tape so I can try to get a perfect square. For but, my... but, but what I was saying is, despite, you know youtube's restrictions and how youtube is on this platform there is an audience i know there's an audience for the artwork that i do specifically mm -hmm. there will be an audience for everything and you know you just kind of you just kind of do it and you just let your audience you let that audience find you that audience will end up finding who you are you know <laughs> or where you what you do because i learned that the longer you try to focus and the same thing is like with commentary with you know a lot of a lot of a lot of people a lot of people we know a lot of people who do the commentary like jay and such like that mm -hmm. it's like you know for as great as you'll be able to talk about current topics and such like that it does mm -hmm. get to a point where it's like are you personally happy with doing content based on whatever mm -hmm whatever current trending events. at the time yeah or yeah. Not, not just not just current events but whatever art trend is at the time whatever yeah. is the popular thing to draw at the time it's like are you going to be end up being happy though i like because that you say that because that, that was into, it has to come into play that has yeah. to be a factor because Do you enjoy what you're doing Otherwise, yeah, you're pretty miserable. It's one of those things where it's like looking at it from a business perspective versus looking at it from a creative standpoint. I, I do, like Rogue try, says. And, and I think uh, it's it's so important for me is that I want to try to, I want to try to find that balance, you know, try to find that line, you know? Uh, he says, I think you need to get to the point where people are there for you beyond the content. It seems exactly. like all big channels have that. Exactly. It's more about the personality than it really is about exactly. the product. People, I remember uh, there's this life coach that I watched, Tracy Hansel on mm -hmm. YouTube, and she gives pretty great advice about just different things. And she said, people are buying you. They're not buying they're not necessarily buying your product. They're buying the product because of you. So mm -hmm. you need to work on your, basically your presentation, your personality. And like you said, though, there are different people in the world. You ever heard of the comedian Stephen Wright? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, come on now. He would not be the person that most people would pick to be a comedian, but stinking hilarious. I love his yeah, dry a... sense of humor. So yeah, you, you're right. There will be somebody out there for you. I think it just depends on, are you looking at this from a business aspect? Or are mm -hmm. you looking at it from like, yeah, personal channel growth, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and it's like, and I think it goes back to what you want to be, what I, what do I want to be within, what do I want this channel to be within 2023. It's like, yeah, I want and more. It's not just like getting the, 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 the getting the subs and growing the channel. It's like, I growing a community, be, really. Growing a community, but I want to be an art channel first and foremost. I want people to see that this is an art channel. Right. I get happy, you know, you know, and I'm seeing this. When I get happy when I post videos, especially my sketch diary, and what's in my recommended is other art videos. 
Like they put it in art of art of videos. And I was like, that's what I want. I want to be in our channel. But yeah, you know, that's more important because I think it's that because that's what I want to achieve. But I have uh I've always told the story and I've always told or told this philosophy is that for me, um what I and, and this is a goal that I want to continue doing because um You know, one of the biggest, you want to know what the biggest success, you know, getting 1K monetized is a big success. Yes. A big milestone trial. Of course. But you know what the greatest thing, the greatest thing to happen to my channel, you know what that is? Mm -hmm. You can say it's the subs, it's the people showing up, it's no. Is people telling you that they started drawing because of you. Yeah. I have had people tell me that they've started, they've gotten into art or they've gotten back into art because of just watching me draw. Oh. You don't know how incredible of a feeling that is. Oh, yeah, for sure. You just inspire people to draw just the same way you were inspired. And that's Um, ultimately what I want my channel to be is to just, to just, inspire people to pick up a pencil to pick up a pen to just start drawing um i'm an art teacher uh for my profession and i i teach kids and uh when they come back to my classes because i provide different kinds of classes and they they tell me yeah i learned this and i like this and i love the way that you teach this and um because yeah like you said because of you i started doing more of this and that I don't know what that is. You know, it's not selfishness, but it does make you feel good knowing you're the person that helps somebody else to do whatever the case might be. That's such a great feeling. It really but is. I, I, and I, I want to, uh, I got a couple examples is that one is, of course, my co host, Mads Malbert, who basically she's, she got back into art from just being around me all the time. Yeah, um, it'll rub funny, off on the you. people in like my CSF Nation chat. That's my fan base. I call them CSF Nation. It's an acronym okay. for cute. It's an acronym for cute, sexy, and fun. It's it's actually it, there's a there's actually a story behind that. Um, I'm, I'm sure there is. But um, <laughs> no, great. but another person is Arwen. When oh, we first yeah. had her on, she wanted to share her work with me, and I was like, I brought in CSF Nation chat, but her just watching her getting a chance to just come into marketing live and stuff that's motivated. That has been a motivator for her to get back into art. Yeah. It's been such a, and especially considering, considering, considering everything that's happened to her Mm. in the past couple of years, it was, you know, hearing that is me. I've heard hearing that from people tell you, I started drawing because of you. I started learning this and that because of you. And it's like, yeah. It feels so good, man. It I feels think like because we also like, know that there's a therapeutic aspect to it. Like people don't realize that a lot of them, like you know, like you hear about it, you know, art therapy, blah blah blah. But it really expressing yourself, even just through colors. Like even if you literally wanted to do abstract art and splat colors across a canvas, there is something that if you do it, but, it, it comes out. Right. It just helps you. Right, and I and I and I hope that in this, I hope that in this. Uh, I hope that this year I get more of that. And I hope that I get more of people telling me that they actually started taking their art seriously because of me. Mm-hmm. That they started taking their work seriously, that they wanted to be a, a professional and they wanted to have a career you know, because of me. That means a lot. You know, I want to have people, I want to have those experiences where my work gets immortalized in a tattoo. I want to have those experience. I want to have those experiences. <laughs> I want to have that experience of somebody actually doing a 3D model based off of one of my drawings. Oh wow! <laughs> I would 3D love model. to have that feeling, man. That would be an accomplishment. I know people. <laughs> <laughs> no, just somebody just turned what I did and yeah, made a you're 3D right. model out of it. I was like, are you serious? That, those feelings are amazing, and it's just that's what you want to achieve, and that's you know what I personally want to achieve. I want I want this channel to be just 
you know, to be that. And I also want this channel to be that for me. I was like, when I do digital, when I'm doing this digital, I said that this is going to, this is going to open doors for me. This, I think this is going to open doors for me and do be able to do stuff I want to be able to do. Like, we just like, okay. Like, I just saw, I just saw, uh, I just saw Trunk 3PO just like drop the first couple pages of his graphic novel. I know. And it's just like everybody, I am seeing so many people able to get a book out. And I've had people tell me, Mockety, where's your book? I want to, I want to, is this going to be an art book? Is it going to be a comic? And it's like, it takes a long time for me to be able to do that. And it's right. like, I, I, I'm so jealous of that. It's like, I know. Man, I'm looking forward to doing... seeing what that's going to be like, too. I know. And it's like, I'm Beautiful. still thinking, I'm like, should I do a full on art book beforehand? Should I do an art book or should I just go full for it with my project? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, that's, and it, my, my project is, I actually, I want to do, I want to do a manga. I want to do an American okay. manga. Yeah, your it's... characters look fantastic. Like, your, your style and everything would be fantastic. Yeah, so that's what I was wanted to do, and it's something that's been and it's based on an idea I've had since 2015 or so. So it's something that's always been working on, and I've been working on like consistently for the past couple of years. So it's just, you know, it's just maybe finding the right tools, or maybe find the right, maybe find the right time to do it, or maybe just wait until you have every you have your story and everything laid out, and then you could start. Like, cause you're like, you're writing it all out first and then you can, once you have it fully laid out, then you can start drawing it. And you, you, know, got, you gotta have, have a kind of a plan. Yeah. yeah. And that's like, that's what it is. I have a game plan. I know that it, that's for me, that's going to take long. It's like, I can't, I can't be like, I was like, I can't be like Jay. I can't, I can't be like fatal. I can't be like Eric July. I can't be like so many of these amazing people, especially in the CG and stuff like that. It's like so many amazing creators out there putting out, not just art, not just comics, but just putting out content. You know, seeing so people is like, you know, I have enough material here that I could put together an art book. Then I could yeah. put together an actual art book just on just on my past experiences, past life sketches. Like, um, one of my goals here is the sketch diary series, and the it's a it's a series that I used to do on Monday, and I want to get back into it. But the what the sketch diary is is that I have throughout I. I cannot tell you how many sketchbooks I have collected since college. Oh, I yeah. I have like 40 or 50 of them. Oh, I don't have that many, them. but I've got about, yeah, I've probably got like close to 20. <laughs> every, every, I have collected every sketchbook I've had since high school. I, I haven't, see, I didn't them. start sketching, not, not really sketching until uh -huh. like mid college. Yeah. Right. But the thing is, is that I've, because of my friend, because one of my friend, our friends, he uh been friends for a long time and something i've noticed is that he has filled every single page in his sketchbook i have never once did that and that's <laughs> I mean, what maki sketch diary is is the idea is that i have i take a brand new sketchbook and the goal is to fill out every single page mm -hmm. and i make it into a video blog it turn it yeah. into a video blog and it's i can talk about my life i can talk about uh, just my journeys and stuff, my experiences and stuff, and just each page is, and the goal is to just fill out every single page. And that sketchbook has like what 150 pages, so I'll be like 150 videos. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, well, that's it's proactive. a journey. This is a journey for me. It's a journey. It's a it's a blog. You know, I get to d detail my experiences and such like that. Uh, you so know? you said you've never filled an entire sketchbook. Never. What's the closest never. you have ever gotten? You think? I don't even remember because whatever I filled any pages that I might have filled out is probably because some of those pages were probably ripped out. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I don't know why, oh, you, you know, know what? what? I lie. I think I just now I'm terrible YouTuber. Can't I've even never keep filled out. I've never filled out a single sketchbook in my entire I life. I did for the first time in my life. Now that I'm such an idiot. I the last uh, or the first video that I did for this year, um, I did. I went through all the artwork that I created. Or at least I tried to. <laughs> All the artwork I created in 2022, and I did actually fill my uh, what's it called? Oh, hoo -hoo? is that what it's called? Um, uh -huh. Sketchbook. I was the first sketchbook I have ever in my life filled every page. Um, 
that I would felt like such a sense of accomplishment too. It I don't is. know why. I don't know why it's so hard to fill sketchbooks completely. It is. It is. It, but you what know, is I, I'm still committed. It, you know, I'm, that's a mystery right there. Like why? There's why such is that a mystery? Hard? Because you always have this, you have this like this tendency that you want to start fresh and such. Yes. You want to start like start over, dedicate different sketchbooks. Like I have de different sketchbooks dedicated to different stuff I draw. Oh, absolutely. Like, I have one sketchbook dedicated to my. Actually, I have multiple sketchbooks dedicated to my project. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just one, but multiple. But that's one thing. It's like it's it's always kind of one thing. Is why do I always tend to start over fresh? It's just you don't like it maybe because you don't like some of the pages in there. You want to start with a fresh new set of pages and and and. And just do i think it's like getting up? new clothes like you just yeah. want to, you just want to use it right away exactly. <laughs> wear it right away and then another uh, thing yeah. is like uh, another thing is like i have a sketchbook dedicated to channel member all my art that i'm going to do for my channel members or traditional okay. art that i'm gonna do for my channel members i have a sketchbook dedicated to that so that way i know where it's easy where to find and i can keep it all in one place you know it's <laughs> You know, it's 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 different. It's it's we, weird. We'd be but crazy just, up here in the art world for sure. It is. Your art life is crazy. <laughs> art life is trying just, to keep track of everything, not even understanding why you do the things that you do. <laughs> no, but you do it anyway. It is, but you do it, and it's just, it's there's that it's that sense of wonder. It's a um, sense of wonder there, you know. So what what are some of your favorite mediums to to work with, and what are some of your least favorite? Um, well, my comment, aside from digital right now, my common media is, of course, traditional mixed media. In terms of paper, I prefer uh, cardstock and mixed media, mainly because those work so well with inks. They mm -hmm. actually work a lot well with inks, and it depends on, see, I'm in the process of wanting to throw out all my pens and just start fresh. Just because <laughs> I have so, so many ink pens and and I don't want to, and if they're clogging up all my cups and I'm like, let's start fresh. So, yeah. and, and a lot of those pens are like already been worn out. The ink's gone and such like that. And I'm like, yeah, there's still I have so many different pens, but ink is my. You go to. It is. I don't know what it is, but something about inking when I see it, it's like, it's amazing. <laughs> It's amazing. It's like just something about it that I absolutely fell in love with. And even when it comes to, di even when I see a piece that's like, it's all inked and digital, I want to replicate that in, in the yeah. traditional. I want to replicate those lines. Something about doing those line work is just, it's not just a, it's not just a, like, oh, it's just a soothing therapeutic feels. Like, no, it's. It's just your life. It's some life. I'm inspired by that. I don't know where it came from, but it's just, maybe it's just because from, you know, I've, you know, I read a lot of manga growing up or I've just been, a, I've been, you know, that's the part of comics that I appreciate more than anything else is inks. Okay. It's just it blow me away. I have um, like this, I have this huge folder of nothing but ink drawings I've collected. I uh, find like, and I use that as inspiration. I, I can't just, say that I, I do much. I have to just, I just have to save it. It's like. Yeah, I can't say I do much necessarily with ink. I, I'm a pencil kind of gal. I love me. Oh, I've, I've gone back in the pencil and people, people love the pencil work. I love me a rough sketch. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, there's just something rustic, something earthy about it that just I gravitate to. But it's yeah. but you, but then you get like and I have a folder of pencil sketches and it's just like these amazingly well drawn ones that are just like oh, <laughs> I want to be able to do that and that's what a lot of my and that's what a lot of the the photos I save is like I want to do that I want to be able to do that I want to mm -hmm. learn how to do that I want to study it and just pick up and just what is it this is like I think it was one of the one of the uh, one of the videos I was watching uh, earlier this week came from a. Uh, uh, a uh, big, big artist, uh, Mark Brunette, who used to be a uh, used to be a con used to, uh, senior concept artist at Blizzard, and he was okay. saying was like one of the ways to kind of get into you know how to learn quickly was like look at your favorite artist, whoever your favorite artist is, why why you like the work, start grabbing their work and start examining and pin noting, taking notes of like what is it that about their work that you like. What yeah. is it, the aspects? And then you start learning how to kind of, okay, start practicing 
learning how to shade like that or how to do this kind of this that and a third you know mm -hmm. that's how you learn yeah you, you kind of yeah. and that's kind of one of the quick ways to kind of learn and develop your own style right because you'll always that was one of those things so I'm sure you've most, I would, I'm going to just go ahead and presume that like most artists, you struggle with finding your own style, not realizing that even if you're copying somebody else, you're putting your own style into it. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I struggled with for years and real, yeah, it was only until maybe two years ago where I, because I, I'm not formally trained in drawing and, um, mm -hmm. and painting. So that was something that I had to trial and error. Lots of years of loathing, self-loathing. Like I'm, I'm gifted yeah, that in has drawing. To, but but that has to be the thing, though. That has to happen. You can't. You there's no quick fire way to do it. You have to. Right. You're gonna have to screw up. <laughs> yeah, and I don't like that. Right. I don't like the fact that you have like to. Right. Have to. That, I mean, that even as a life lesson, and that's one thing I love about art and I try to encourage people, you can learn so much about life just from artwork itself. You learn about patience, you learn about determination, you look about, learn about resilience and look, looking at the bigger picture, um, you know, not, yeah, being willing to accept your limitations and your potential, hard work. I mean, it, there's a lot that goes into it. And it's not just slapping colors onto a canvas or a sketch pad or something like that. Uh, what would you say is probably your greatest lesson ever learned through your artwork? Um, I know, big question right there. <laughs> I'll give you time to think about it. <laughs> that's and, uh, hard. That's yeah, hard, go ahead. I think one of. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll say one of. There's yeah. one of the greatest things I learned. Sure. Um, and this came from a... Uh, this came from, I, I learned this uh, just last year. Okay. Um, it came after, um, I was doing, a, on the second show, I think we did, uh, uh, the second time I had Arden Avalon stream, I had Arden stream with us. Um, at the time, we just had the sudden passing of, 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 an artist that I love, uh, oh. Kim Jung Ji. If okay. you don't know who that is, um, he he was a famous uh, Korean artist. He's well known for doing ink on murals. He'll do ink. He'll oh, do wow. huge ink murals on walls. He's done, he did art. He does. He did art shows uh, all around the world for that. He does. He's well known for his art shows, and he passed away suddenly uh. as he was on tour. And it had made me realize, and I was, and I was starting to talk with Arlen. Is like, and and it reminded me of the passing of Kentaro Mira a few years ago, who was the creator of Berserk, one of the most well-known mangas in history. I'm not a manga person, so I don't know. No, no, but 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 there's something in mind. He, both of those. The reason I'm bringing them both of them up is because. They died, both of them died doing what they loved. loved. That's what it is. They you can it's 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 almost like with Kitaro Mira's passing, it was almost poetic. It's it's okay. kind of poetic, you know? Dying doing what he spent his entire life creating this world, this manga, this story. And he dedicated his entire life all the way up until his death. He died with a pen in his hand. And I, I keep telling, and I keep telling people, my co-host is like, if I had, if, if I, if, if there was, a, it's not certain. Life is always uncertain. Mm. But if there was ever, if I ever said, if, you had, if I ever had a choice to how I want to leave this earth, I would yeah. do it with a pen in my hand and still drawing. Hmm. That's yeah. how I want. To, that's how I. That's how personally I want to leave this earth. Right. Is I want to still be drawing up until my last breath. Because this is this is my life for me. This is my second life. This is my second form of breathing. I can't imagine what my life would be like if I is I was not blessed with this talent right now. Mm -hmm. I can't. It's so hard to imagine that. But 
to tie it back in, one of the greatest things I learned was that Kintaro Mira's work and uh, Kintaro Mira's passing and Kim Jong Ji's passing. And another thing was that I have had people ask me, and I know this is a long winded question that I get to, I know this is a long winded yeah. answer, but it, it's all good. But there's I a understand. meaning behind it. There's a meaning yeah. behind it. Um, this week, I got, uh, I was contacted. I, I got reached out. One of my uh, one of my friends in middle school discovered my channel. Oh, cool! How's that feel? And <laughs> it's amazing. It was it's a blast from the past. But what was uh, insane about that was that this was a friend that I had looked up to, that I mm -hmm. was so jealous of, because mm. she had this amazing talent. Yeah, and she would tell me that you know. For her, drawing is now a luxury just because she just doesn't have the time to do it. Yeah. And she asked me personally, she saw my work. She saw what I was doing. I was like, how did you stay motivated after mm. all these years? And it's the same question people ask me, how do you do this? How do you get start drawing? That is one of the, th and see, there's a the thing. It gets to my answer. You asked, what is one of the greatest things I learned? And it's this. <laughs> I never stopped drawing. <laughs> I never stopped. Never I never get I never had a reason to. Right. I never had a reason to stop. I never gave myself a reason to stop. That's what people keep telling me. People keep asking me, it's like, okay, what it, Okay, how do you do this? How did you do all this? Like, I never stopped. Yeah. I don't care how long it took me. I just never stopped. I I have I have been doing this. I have taken this work seriously for eight years, like eight, nine years now. I've never stopped doing this. I was able to achieve what I was able to achieve because I never stopped. Yeah. That's yeah. the greatest thing I learned. Same here. I'm not being an artist. I never stopped. Yeah, you look back to where, how far you've come, yeah. like from where you came from. And yeah, you're right. It's where would I have been at? What would my life would have looked like had I just said it's not worth it? Um, you know, it's not, it's not, I, I could easily just quit and get a career, you know, a normal career. <laughs> it, what, what, what the world deems a normal career. I mean, what is a normal career? A, a, a constant occupation i would say yeah. a normal occupation if you will something yeah. like that but um and and there's been plenty of times where i've just thought about quitting plenty of times but, but somehow you can't you know that's what i tell people what i realized when i went to when i decided to be an artist full time you know i was struggling like can i do this how am i going to do this and I, is is this really what i need to be doing and i just started realizing that art infused itself to everything that i did whether it was doodling that's of your life gardening yeah i told people it's like i realized that when i was struggling when i had quit or was going to quit one of my one of the jobs that i had um and try to go full-time artistry i'm like how can i do this and i just wasn't sure and i was back and forth on the fence about it and god knows <laughs> how indecisive i can be about big life decisions and i was vacuuming and all of a sudden it was like, without realizing it, my eyes just kind of like opened up. The scales fell, if you will. And God just kind of showed me like, this is what you do. And I looked in the carpet and I'm like making palm tree designs in the, <laughs> in the carpet. Like when I, when I vacuum, I can't just do this nonsense. Like it's got to look like something, right? That thrills my heart when I have these patterns in the carpet sure. and, uh, that was like that was the sign that was it i was like i'm meant to do this now there's been a it's been a struggle for sure I, but I'm meant i i just to do this. I, I i can never see myself being able to be a full-time illustrator i just i just can't and the reason is just because it's it's not sustainable yeah and i feel like i don't have the work enough i don't think it's it's good enough to even be considered to I don't think what I do is good enough to even be considered oh. being sustainable for it. You know, it's it's like I see people like like I follow. You know, there's a lot of artists who got big on Patreon who basically made their 
you know, who basically have basically made their entire life, spent the rest of their life illustrating now because of mm -hmm. the incredible support they got. Yes. You know, just because of people who support them every month. I could see that, but it's just like, you know, I don't think I could be a full-time professional artist. I would love to be. I would love to be a professional. It's just, I don't think it's it's probably in the car. I just don't think it's probably in the cards for me for probably for a multitude of reasons. Mm -hmm. But never say never, right? Never say never. And this is, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to stop drawing. I'm not going to treat this as a journey for me. Right. I'm going to learn this. I'm going to, if I, if I, if I spend the rest of my life be a hobbyist and so be it, I'll be a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. If I be a semi-pro, fine. If I, if they get that chance, I could still be a pro even at, even at, even at 30, th even at 33, 32. <laughs> trying to figure out how old you are? <laughs> no, it's, it's this weird stigma. Oh, it's okay. this weird, it's this weird thing. I, I, Oh, it's about not, how people need to have their life figured out at a certain age? Well, it's not just that, but it's like the the guys, the people, the artists that I've been inspired by and such like that, a good portion of them are younger than me. Yeah. They're in like their 20s or so. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm learning from. Or I'm learning from older ones, of course, but it's like, you know, does it it's always just i always had that weird out of place where i was like i'm hanging out with a lot of people who are still in their 20s i i speak to a lot of artists who are still in their 20s and i'm yet i feel like this old inadequate yeah i feel like oh, i feel like i'm not i feel like i'm past my behind time. i feel like i'm past my prime i feel like my time has passed but but that's the great thing about art there is no prime people, yeah okay. people remind me people constantly remind me that no you're never past your prime you're, it's, you're, it's I would interesting. Say you're, you're just as good as you were in your twenties. I would argue you're probably even you probably even surpassed what you've done in your twenties. You probably surpassed yeah. that. I uh, don't you think it's interesting how how artwork seems to be the one hobby activity job whatever that you could never be too old to start. Mm -hmm. Like there is no. You can never be, and I guess you can never be too old to have a career in it. Like it was especially always, nowadays with technology. Yeah, and I and I think to myself, I was like, I always reminded this. I always remind me. I always remind me of this. Jack Kirby, he didn't start drawing the Fantastic Four until he was in his forties. I oh, never. Wow. I will never forget that. Yeah. Well, and again, with the use of technology, I mean, more women. You know, after their kids graduate and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff, they're starting jobs on social media, and like, they're just. That's, I guess it goes back to that whole thing of never to let anybody tell you what you can and cannot do. You know, if you have, if you have the determination, you can, you know, I, something that changed my life, honestly, and that I try to remember all the time when I'm having my, my lazy days or my sad days or whatever you want to call them, your mopey days mm -hmm. is it was on Facebook years ago. And I honestly don't really remember what the commercial was for, but it was this ad on Facebook and it was black and white and it had all these ladies that were like in their mid forties and older up into the seventies or so. And it was just talking about like technology and tools these days. And again, I don't remember exactly what it was for, but at the end of it or near the end of it, it said, if we had what you have today, we would have been unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And I just, I do. I, when I have my mopey days, I'm like, I have no excuse because with the internet, with all the free education that's out there, with all the free exposure that you could possibly have. And of course, we do understand that it makes it tougher because it's so saturated. But at the same time, it's like, what's your excuse? You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to get like kind of like what you're saying, too. I don't want to get to the end of the road there almost in reverse, though. But I, I never want to feel like there's a ceiling. I never want to feel like there's a ceiling for me. Or that I didn't try, you know, exactly. like that, that whole YOLO thing, but I, I don't want to be an idiot about it, <laughs> yeah. but I, I don't want to get to the end of the road and be like full of regret that I didn't at least mm -hmm. try. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And it's like, I don't want to, and it's kind of the same thing for me. It's like, if I, if I, if I'm at, if I can make it to, I want to make it to the end of the road, knowing that I've been able to achieve what I set out to do. 
and to be as successful as my folks are and to be mm -hmm. able to do the art that I've been in, to be able to be able to do art just as good as the people that have been inspired by me for my entire life. Yeah. You know, that's, that's for me, that's, that means a lot. So you're talking about different people that are inspiring to you. I, people ask me that a lot. You know, I've been on different podcasts, been interviewed. People ask me, so who inspires you? And honestly, I don't have an answer because I don't really follow other artists. I, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, like I, I look at other people's art, but I don't actually study or anything mm -hmm. other people's art. I just, I see something and I like it and I maybe try to learn or emulate it, but I just kind of learn and focus on my own thing there. Do you, you said you have some favorites though. Whoa, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Uh, sorry. Screen. I don't know sorry, what I, I saw. Okay. <laughs> I was, sorry. I wasn't looking. Hopefully it okay. wasn't indecent. <laughs> no, hopefully not. No, it wasn't. I'm just like, yeah, I was trying to close my, trying to look for other windows right now. <laughs> I was like, oh, what is it? You can edit it out. Don't worry. Edit it out. Just edit it out, please. Uh <laughs> We're raw and unfiltered here with discretion on streaming. <laughs> but it, it, what you were saying, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anyway, you were saying. Um, oh, just like what are pe who are some people that inspire you, and why is that? Okay, so, so, I guess to to kind of get started on, like, because I did digital for uh, I was doing digital at the time, and then I just switched back to traditional for eight years straight. <laughs> 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 but it was all inspired by digital artists, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Colombian artist uh, Renato Quin I think it's uh, Renato Quintaro but he goes by the name of Rake okay. uh, professional artist and I was looking at his early ink work and his early traditional work and that just inspired me that just inspired me to do it in pen um, um, uh, Japanese uh, mentioned uh, ja uh, kind of the thing because uh, I want to achieve when I do digital I do want to end up achieving this artist and her name is uh dana fuga a uh, japanese uh pinup artist who inspired who's i've been supporting her for five years straight on patreon she's been one of my other inspirations um for kind of the the more cute angle but no one not well it, okay that <laughs> that no but another artist who's been and being inspired me of is if i could pronounce his name right he's because he's a french artist Ah, okay. Xavier, Xavier, I think Xavier Gustav or Xavier Gustav or Xavier Hazen, but he goes by the name of Ja Ja Ja. It's X A X A X A. <laughs> but he's a professional French artist. I love okay. the door, how cute his style is. It's absolutely inspiring off the stuff at that time. But um actually, actually, hey, hang on, you got my screen up. Actually, screen up. Let me let me just show, let me see if I can find something from him. I just didn't find something from the people I mentioned. So, uh, because I can just show my, wait, can I say, yes, I can. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let me find it. Uh, because I have this stuff here. So. See that learning curve we were talking about. Uh, let me find a good face. Good. Um, but it was Rake's, uh, first up, it was Rake's traditional work that inspired me. So this is one, I'll show you. This is kind of one. It's oh, okay. One. It's just, I love that. It's just, I don't know. Something about that. It was like so cheap. Well, I could do it with inks and I, let me mm -hmm. do that. Um, Danden stuff. Uh, let me find a. Let me find a really. Let me find a safer YouTube one. How about that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a safer YouTube. Okay. Something. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Shoot. I am almost done with my painting, by the way. I, so see, that's just, what I was saying. Like oh, that. here we go. Here we go. Uh, Okay, here we go. Danden. Oh, Dan okay. Right that's here. beautiful so color. Yeah, that's what I want to achieve. <laughs> so yeah, that's you're gonna right. Take, that's yeah. going to take years. But that's going to take Look years to pull off, though. The blend. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah, that's the thing I love to do is blending. And I see that skin, <laughs> and I'm just, like, in awe. And I'm like... But this one, this one, but this, uh, but Zsa 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 is one I think you're going to like the most because... Uh, that style is so adorable, but yet it's it's incredibly inspiring to me, and it's inspired a lot of my work. Inspired so much of my work over the years, but uh, I do love it. 
Yeah. Let me find a good one. But I there's believe- so many. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share. I'm just gonna go like I'm just gonna go like crazy with this one. So here. Okay. So this is Ja's work. This is a bit of his work. Just That's pretty cool. All of that. Just absolutely adore it. I adore that style so the much. The colors are beautiful, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what do you know what that pretty. style is called? See, this is what's so bad about me is that and it's, I know he's I'm, a he's a he's a French artist too. So I know, but I, I don't know what the styles and the techniques are called, right? That's the problem mm-hmm. with I think being self-taught and not mm-hmm. following anybody. I have no idea what these styles are called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's like it's like such a cartoon style, but it's so unique, and I absolutely love it. I adore it, and so I've used that as been my biggest inspiration for a long time. But it's I love how whimsical it is at times. I love, it's just like it's so much of it. It's like I want to achieve that too. It's like yeah, me I, too. Now I love <laughs> that one picture of the lady with the the cherry blossoms in the background. You know, I do. I adore that style just because I I love a good blend, and I know mm-hmm. that in fine artwork, when it comes to painting that when it comes at least to oil paint, I don't know if it, I wouldn't think it applies to acrylics as well. Mm-hmm. It's known as, let's see if I pronounce this correctly, Sufmato painting. It's basically like what um, mm-hmm. Da Vinci did. Now, typically when you use oil paints, a lot of people right. like to leave behind the strokes, the, the marks, yes. the bristle see, that, and and I've, I've been following a lot of artists who do that, who don't blend as much. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to learn how to do those kind of how to kind of leave those kind of strokes, those kind of edges to give that paint. To, give to it, see, yeah, my preference really feeling, but yeah, my preference is like as much of a flawless blend as I can do, which is what Da Vinci was actually known for. Because mm-hmm. if you get really close up to his paintings, like Mona Lisa, you don't, you can't tell where the brush strokes start and stop, mm-hmm. and it's all a flawless, smooth transition. But I have been trying to work on the opposite, like just leaving um the 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 impression behind and letting it blend from a distance because they say that's a lot of what artwork is you know you're not necessarily supposed to be like up close but when you yeah but but i'll do this and i'll like because i'll do this and i'll like zoom in i'll just look at all the different strokes and you can see that he leaves a lot of uh he doesn't blend in everything it's all a lot of it's just left but it's so like detailed and there's so much like i assume there's like there's so many layers to it that you have to spend so much time on just this one aspect to get that effect, mm-hmm. you know? I, yeah. That's what I want to learn. That's why, and that's one reason why I picked up, uh, why why I went digital, <laughs> you know? That's that's a big inspiration for me, you know? Now, your your picture here is looking pretty cool. Mario, number one, looks super happy. I, I really love the the mushroom, like what you've I don't done. Draw, and I don't draw male characters that much. And yet, I, this is like my first time drawing Mario, and I think I figured, and I figured it out. It's like, but I, it's funny because having seen your art style and um, looking at this guy, this male form, I think it's funny how you do have a feminine curve to his body, though. God dang like, it! Like dang it! it. Does, like it does translate. No, but I think that's in a way, honestly, I think that's pretty cool because it just means that whatever you do it's like it's you can't help it like it's flowing into it and i I try to i'm i i i I need to study i i I am trying to study male anatomy more just so it doesn't look feminine all the time (laughs) but it's just i i think that's actually kind of cool that it just almost can't help but leak over you know it just somehow (laughs) sneaks its way in somehow it's like you don't even really you're trying so hard not to it's like oh it's easy it's just just there And, and see and you didn't even see it did you no, I didn't notice it, and I'm trying not to. And I'm like, I'm trying to like, like, no, no, this is manly. This is manly here. There's no <laughs> like, Just because it has a mustache doesn't make it manly. Am I right? I know. <laughs> I know. Speaking to the bearded ladies in the chat. Um, C4C says it came out great. I myself am not quite finished. I'm letting the thickness here, the yellow paint dry. I'm actually really happy with this. I like it better than my original. I'm going to do a side by side comparison when I am finished. Let you guys decide which of my paintings is right. better. Because again, like we said, you can't really compare uh, Machines to mine because they're two different mediums. But there might be one that you enjoy more than the other. But I, I like this kind of Disney Thomas Kincaid vibe I've picked up. <laughs> For, I do too. I do too. For it's Mario, like you, you know, like I do too. I like that. It's kind of. It's just and I have like, and I have like multiple hours of probably This looks so amazing. Uh, it's not basic. It's just a, it's a different thing. Uh, 
And I think it's just what C4C is just like, I, I think it's because I've drawn females for so long. Yeah. That it just kind of sneaks in. It's like, but, I'm sure it would be the other way around too. If you were mm -hmm. accustomed to painting the, the male body, you couldn't help but design the female body that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it, like Thanos, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Yeah. I, I Like I said, I'm probably going to do a video. Like I said earlier, I'm probably going to do a video explaining why I have a specific why i specifically do those specific kind of drawings and yeah it is, it, is it is kind of complicated but it is very personal for me and mm -hmm. it deals with just kind of personal experiences for me as well so <laughs> you know i think that's also one of the great things about youtube is that you can speak about whatever you would like obviously mm -hmm. with consequences but you can kind of talk about whatever you want and as an artist i don't know about you but many a time i i haven't felt heard right and I, understood and right because people don't a lot of times people don't want to take the time to listen to why you did what you did yeah and but, that kind of hurts not that they intentionally do that but mm -hmm. because it's like nobody takes the time to fully understand why you put a piece of yourself onto a canvas or whatever well, and, and here's the be. thing and here's the thing is that you know you Because, like I said, sometimes you, you it's, you, you, I know, I know, I know this is like for some people who are art artists, they don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. But then you just kind of, you, you think to yourself, it's like, wait a minute. What you're doing here, what you're drawing, my pen is my voice. Right. That's how I voice. That's how I speak out. Sometimes that's how artists is. You use art. Sometimes you use your art as your voice. That's how you speak out on stuff. You tell it through art. You say you speak out. That's how right. you feel about something. You draw it out. And then sometimes people still can't really understand. So that's what is nice about yeah. the live streams. You can kind of just talk along with your audience because once all of a sudden they start getting engaged, you're like, yeah, this is. I chose this because it was really personal to me and. Um, I really have a connection with whatever nature and this, that, and the third, and you can really just talk and I don't want to use the term. It's a safe space because people can ridicule mm -hmm. you anywhere you go, but it, it, it allows you the opportunity to really t express the emotional and psychological aspect of your art, not just pretty colors, mm -hmm. not just pretty women. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that you, a lot. you know, I like that. I like that thought. It's just like, I, I guess because for me, it's like, why do pretty women? It's just like there's a there is an emotional, personal aspect behind it, and there is a reason, and there is, and it is personal for me. <laughs> it is personal right. for me, and I will at some point I will express that because that's because it 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 may either may or may not change your perspective, but it but it gives me uh, the opportunity me to personal, talk about yeah. It. It gives me a personal feeling to kind of express it and express why it, why that it's just like, why it speaks to me and why it speaks to me personally more than just f physical features. Why it's me personally. And, it's, and it's, it's great that you can find other artists who understand and hang out and talk about it because they understand the same thing. You know? that, <laughs> it's, it's more than that. I end up finding genuine people who genuinely understand why. Yes. Like, like even if I, they don't like I, I love it it's like even if they don't like your artwork they can appreciate number one the passion the effort the work and the story behind it like yeah it's you know funny. dude it's not my you cup of tea funny, but you know what the I, funny thing is it, it's the weird thing is i've discovered this the, the this past two years mm -hmm. You could say that, yeah, yes, like my work is cheesecake. You could say it's like, you know, it's, it's, what does that mean? <laughs> it's appealing. It's appealing. It's, oh, you know, okay. it's, it's, it's appealing, very appealing, easy on the eyes and stuff like that. But yeah, you can say that, yeah, it's definitely targeted towards a certain demographic. It's towards a male demographic. Mm -hmm. You don't know. It's, it's insane how I have somehow, I have done, I have done, I have done this kind of art. That you think it's just like, oh, it's meant for guys and stuff like that. But I have somehow built a female fan base because of it. <laughs> I <know>. How? <laughs> I know. That's great. It's insane. It's like, like, because I think it just comes in and a lot of it just comes down to like, listen, you can get it. You can, you can get offended all you want. 
But yeah. you cannot deny the fact that people generally like visually something that's visually appealing to them. It's a visual medium. Oh, yeah. People like sure. stuff that is visually appealing to them. I've and and surprisingly, for as risque as I can be with my work, it's so it's some reason I've developed a female fan base. Well, I think also I've noticed, like, at least on Twitter with gamers and things like Mm -hmm. that, there is kind of like this attack on the female on femininity. And I think that's part of the reason why I do what I do. And I think that's going to factor in. (laughs) Right. And so they come and they see it and, you know, maybe some things are exaggerated, but that's kind of how that style kind of is. It's how you can have fun with it. They look like women. Um, I've... I did this sketch of, uh, I have never, I, I would never forget this. And it goes back into the whole, you know, you've inspired people to draw stuff and the people will tell you those things. It's like, I did this little, I did this sketch of a more, I guess you could say, well, not of an endowed character, but a character who's probably a bit more on, who's probably a bit more on the plumpier side. Mm-hmm. And I've, I got a DM from uh i got a dm from a friend who told me that she absolutely adored that sketch i did because she loved the way that i she loved the way that i depict Mm -hmm. bigger women yeah and she said that was empowering for her that made her feel better about herself and it's like wow yeah Sometimes I think to myself, I was like, despite the risque, despite the cheesecake art I do. I love that. How many <laughs> girls? Like, ser- no, I'm serious when I say this. Like, it makes me think, like, how many girls who probably, how many girls who have probably saw what I did and mm-hmm. were probably, and were probably felt better about themselves because of it? Mm-hmm. That's what yeah. sometimes it happens, you know? It's and, and the fact that I have so many and the fact that I have so many and the fact that I I think in a part of it is rising I do uh of uh, the reason and a part of the reason why I amassed such a female fan base is because it's like Okay, it's on, it's one thing when I do it's like okay, I do a pretty, I do a sexy girl or something and people <laughs> like it, but to speak to somebody's emotions, that's a Hang whole other game. That. It's not just that. It's another thing when it's of them. Oh yeah. So I did when we first had Arwen on, Arwen, I did a drawing. Oh, I saw uh, I did a drawing and I was like, oh, that's she's like, oh, that's so beautiful. That's she was so like, girl. Beautiful. She probably and whipped out her fan. I her, <laughs> and then when I told her, I subsequently told her and I said, it's her. She lost it. She was yeah. like, oh my god, that's me. Wait, I think I may oh have seen god. that. Oh, of course she did. And she started laughing the way we all love the way she laughs. Yes. She has uh, she has a couple of her a couple of drawings I did of her. She has the actual drawings of that framed up yeah. in her inspiration altar. When when women when when you do a piece of work, um of a woman, especially if it's a personal thing and, and you do it in such a way and you're like, this is how I see you. Uh Um, it means so much because most of the time, Hey, little Spidey in R2. Yeah. We're doing Mario. Here's mine. We're doing digital versus traditional. And, um, but when you do that for a woman, because there are so many insecurities about, Mm -hmm body issues whether it's your size in different areas or the wrinkles on your skin because of age or the gray hair or because you don't have gray hair maybe you color your hair all these things that a lot of women face so when you do a picture and you're like this is how i see you you know this is what you could be it it is it's it's amazing the power that that has and um i do i do pictures of my friend who is suffering from an illness and i remember she about she doesn't cry (laughs) Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I showed her a painting that I did of her, 
and I put her in this like white dress and I put these flames around her and put like this phoenix in the background and just really kind of like an empowering picture. And I was like, this is, this is what I see when I look at you. And it just, to see somebody's face when you're like, this is how you see me. It's like, it, it is, it's an amazing feeling. Right. And it's there's so, nothing that can quite replace that. Yeah. And I ha I've had multiple instances of that. Probably one of my, probably the one I remember the most was during the birthday stream. Um, um, I do, uh, when I, on my 30th birthday, I did a special drawing of all of all of my characters. But mm -hmm. the, the cool thing was, was that it was from my perspective. Okay. Because it was all those characters and they were holding my hand. They were taking me to this birthday party and that was kind of the cool. And that was kind of, I thought that would be like a cool thing. And it's just like, you know, they're celebrating with you. That's such a cool idea. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, it's like all your characters, and it's like they're holding this from your perspective. Yeah, so you're looking, they're looking directly at you, and they're holding. And, you, and I actually drew my hands as they are holding my hand the whole time, and oh. I thought I like, did that. But um, so I did on on last year, I did a I did a, a another drawing of that, but this time I replaced some of the characters with uh, many of the characters that I drew on Mockney Live. And a lot of them were based off of some of the guests we've had, some of them based off Maz Von Bear. And mm -hmm. I remember uh, during the birthday stream, I had a lot of the, the people, uh, had a lot of my friends on there. Um, and then I showed this drawing and, and I showed this kind of this huge drawing and it was just like all these, all these female characters and they're all based off of the, the based off of my friends, based off people. And, and we went through each one of them and one of them, uh, one of my closest friends, uh, one of my friends on YouTube, her name is Squeak and Mouse. I've never seen her before. <laughs> yeah, I assume you know who she is. <laughs> I don't. I don't actually. I told okay. you I'm very bad about keeping up with people, okay, but so, I just love the name. Yeah, her name is Squeak and Mouse. Squeak and Mouse. I always pictured her with mouse ears or something because I've never seen uh, Yeah, her. that's what's in my mind right now. Yeah, yeah totally. so I just drew it. So I, I, because I did a drawing of her with mouse ears and she, and she absolutely lost it on stream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she was over but it was kind of the same thing here because i was going through the different names and everybody was like everybody was like remember mags remember arwin everybody was so happy mags is so happy and then we got to the moment we got to uh this one character in the background it had the big mouse ears and when i said it was and squeaka realized it was her she she started tearing up. She had to get off the, she had to step away oh. from the stream just because of how much, because of her seeing that. Yeah, it, it's, it, it does. It those feelings, it's not just, it, it's just not just like a gender thing. It's just those feelings you get, those, those reactions you get. And it's like, wow, you really broke. It's like, it's like, it's like you broke them. It's just like, you've emitted such a strong reaction out of them. Mm -hmm. seeing that you know i did let's see four c says i did a drawing for a pen pal in south america she was so excited she printed it out and had it hung up in her mom's house that's great see there you go you, you just don't you just don't know and there's just know. yeah just something about the way people see you you know i my for me like words are a big thing so like during christmas time i got a gift from a friend and I, we're not really that close but i do consider her a friend and she's mm -hmm. kind of a closed book as well but i came home after i was traveling and my mom gave me this gift bag and she was like by the way this was left at church for you and uh, i was like okay and i open it up and inside is the a wooden letter t mm -hmm. and it's painted gray it's actually on my shelf if anybody wants to see this tea right back here and on it it says tabitha is and it has all these wonderful affirming words mm -hmm. that start with the letter t and i just started crying i'm like if this is what she really thinks about me oh my word and i just 
Yeah, it's the same. So I think that's the same thing when um, it's almost like all the insecurities you have about yourself get erased because other people think differently about you. You mm -hmm. know, they see the potential that you wish you could see in yourself. I've I've had, uh, you know, my Instagram when my Instagram is hacked, you know, I've had people I've, I've had uh, not I've, I've had I've had people do art for me, but mostly it's like it's like collabs or like art trades. But, you know, I've done a challenge before and it's amazing when you kind of look your name up. You look your name up in the you look your name up on like Instagram and you see like that as a hashtag and you see all these people who did work either inspired by you or based off of what you did. Yeah. You know, I've had that before. This is, you know, this is like, you know, it's pretty cool. It is cool. It is, but it's just like the same time. It's just like, I, and I was kind of going through this last, I was kind of talking about this last Sunday is that, yeah, as artists, we're naturally introverts. I guess a lot of artists are naturally introverts. And I think about it is that, I, and I have to, I have to, I have to, and I, I have to say this to everybody here and everybody's watching is like, listen, <laughs> do, do work, you know, do it for yourself, do work for your clients and stuff, but don't, don't try and appeal to other artists really. Yeah. Just don't, don't, just don't, just do it. You know, do, if, do if there's thing. an audience, yeah, if there's an audience you want to try to appeal to, it's just random people, people who discover you. Right. So don't try to do it to, you know, uh, try to appeal to other artists. It's, it's, a lot of times they won't see it. A lot of times is they won't take notice. So don't yeah. worry about it. I, because I, they're busy I, working on their own project. <laughs> exactly. You know. You, you know. Do it, you know? You know. Do it for you, and hopefully it appeals more to normal crowd who can find it. Normal people who can find it. You know. I just I wouldn't I wouldn't appeal to other artists if you want to try to grow. You know, try to grow. Oh cool. yeah, for sure. Because sometimes artists can be really harsh critics too, because we all mm -hmm. have a preference of how we would right. like something, and that will kill your own artistic endeavors. Because just mm -hmm. because so and so doesn't like a certain way, that doesn't mean you should stop. Exactly. Um, like I don't know. There, there is one YouTuber that I sometimes watch. I'm subscribed to him, but I don't really watch him. That often is Slew. Have you heard of him? No. Okay, and his style is not my preference, but it's fascinating just to watch his. This process and so like if he would look at my stuff he might not really like what i do but that's because he has a completely he does more street art work right. style and but we can appreciate the work that goes in it but you would never want to tell somebody that that looks bad just because you no and, but and, but also at the same time it's just like with the the artists i mentioned with the artists that i mentioned it's mm -hmm. like i want to learn from them and i want to be able to do amazing art like them even if they never notice yeah even if they don't know about it it's for you yeah that's the thing you made it yeah and sometimes it's just like it, i remember it's kind of what eric jalava was saying was like you never know who's watching yeah you never realize who you're who you inspired or who you've who you've motivated to start drawing there's probably i i bet you there's probably more people that have probably that I probably that probably watch my stuff and probably have been motivated to start drawing that I don't even know. That I have the no lurkers, idea. yeah. I'll never go out while go the rest of my life never knowing that I've yeah. that I've it probably inspired more people than I thought. Yeah. But you know what? That's worth it. That's worth it. That is so totally worth it. And that actually makes me feel it, it makes it personally it makes you feel like you're accomplishing something because. Yeah, just like you never know, you never know. You may never, you may go the rest of your life never, re never knowing that you probably inspired somebody in what you've done. Like it's, it's yeah. like this whole thing where it's like you don't. Artists usually don't become legends until after they're gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't get recognized until after they're gone. <laughs> like, so people, we would appreciate it yeah, if you, you would, can... uh, you know, support us. Yeah. Like our stuff. You can find my Patreon well, down man. below, my yeah, Etsy shop. Appreciate me while I'm here because I can yeah, be well, gone still tomorrow, here. But, yeah. Uh, well, just yeah, that, was, that, that was the case with Van Gogh. We didn't, right. He didn't become a legend until after he passed away. Wasn't it like, wasn't it like 30, was it 30 yeah, years after he died yeah. or something like that? <laughs> so that could be the case with us. 
That could yeah. be the case with you, Tabitha. You oh, man. But I need, the, I need the, the cash now. now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're gone, you know? You'll be used for art lessons and tutorial history, you know? That's right. That's right. My my but tutorials always, will be for history. history. Yeah, but it's one of the things. It's like sometimes it's like you know. I believe uh, uh, one of my one of my favorite music producers, all time favorite music producers, said that you know, you know, it's that same thing. It's like you don't usually become a legend while you're still. You don't usually become a legend while you're still living. It usually happens after you're gone, and usually it's the people. It's you don't get to kind of decide. If you're a legend, it's the people yeah, that people. you've impacted. Yeah, they yeah. decide the legend for you. They decide your legend, you know? Yeah. So it's like, if you, that's why I think it's important. It's just like, when you leave this earth, make sure you leave this earth, make sure you've impacted people. You mm -hmm. want to make sure you've impacted, you've left in a, a lasting impression on people when you leave this earth. Because I always, I strongly believe this, that you will never be forgotten. People okay. are never forgotten. You, you, people, there will always be people who will remember you. Yeah. For what you did or for who you are. You've impacted. So make sure just, you make sure you, tr you know, you don't, you know, I wouldn't say try to, but always think about that when you're, if you, if you feel like you've impacted somebody's life or if, if somebody had, if you have impacted someone's life, they're not going to forget you. And they're going to decide your legend for you. They're going to decide, the, you know, if you're a legend or not, you know? Legend it's never decided did. by you. That's right. That's why you don't quit. Mm -hmm. for sure. That's why I stop quitting. Yeah. And if, 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 if I leave this world knowing that my legend is, I was the guy who inspired people to not stop drawing. Mm -hmm. Damn, that... That that's gonna feel good for me. Well, not when you're dead, because you won't. Not when you're dead, you won't know. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> think about though. Um. Well, so yes, as predicted, as pre <laughs> I know we got deep today. You know that's what yeah, happens when yes, you get on. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? <laughs> you get deep. So we did go past the two, the the two hour mark. Lovely Sherry's here saying it looks amazing. Oh, Thank you so much. I don't know who you're talking to. It's probably yours because uh, it's blown up. On, it I'm does look I'm going to turn, really turn my camera on. I'm going to turn my camera off for Sherry. So. <laughs> I, I'm going to do a grand reveal for my tape here. There you See go. What this looks like. Uh, oh, I'm afraid that it's looks probably, fantastic. Absolutely. Legal. I'm pretty happy. And then I'm going to give my uh, my side by side comparison of my Jeez. original art piece. So what do you what do you think what do you think he's hitting? Is it, do you think it's going to be a mushroom? Is it going to be a star? Is it going to be a fire flower? You know what? Or is it going to be the poisonous mushroom? That's funny that you <laughs> ask that because in my mind, subconsciously, right? Like I was thinking that, and I'm like, it's going to be the fire flower. Like <laughs> I don't know why, but that's in my mind. I'm like, I just even if I don't paint that coming out, I know that inside this box, your mind is like a fire flower. Isn't it? This I like think it's I like think it's the big mushroom or it's a one up mushroom. The one up mushroom. <laughs> uh, my goodness. Or a star. It could be a it could be an invincibility star. No, it's a fire flower. Look, I'm the creator. <laughs> I know what's in this box. Man, okay. this tape is not doing its thing. This normally is a much more satisfying. <laughs> Part of the it, process. It, the reason, it, like I said, the reason I the reason I picked Mario is because, like you know, because you know Tabitha and me, we we have we have a lot of mutuals, so we know a lot of people in the kind of so the similar circles, like join three PO and stuff. So it's like, what is the one thing that brings us all together? We all universally like that could bring us all together, aside from food and other Star things. Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> Mario. Everybody loves Mario, so like, why not? I'm, I'm a little bit upset. I'm like low key upset. <laughs> this why? Is doing what it's doing. I was, like, I, was thinking myself, I, I was thinking to myself, you know what? You know, what? I, I follow a lot of people who play Mario Kart. I was like, I think I should have done something Mario Kart related. Oh my god. Well it kind of sort of is. Um, oh my gosh because I was hoping for those clean edges man. But now it's like this is like the most rustic that's what you that's what you say guys when it looks hot like a hot mess. You're just like it's rustic. That's what you do exactly. cupcakes and everything. But I was really hoping for something nicer because everything I, I, else is so off cool. topic. Off topic. Can, can you show your hands just one more time? Is that natural lighting? Is that come from the window? Yeah. 
Okay, I like that. I was like, I like the natural lighting. He's like, you got yeah. I only have the one lamp over here, and then my windows. Are okay, right okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I mean, it's not terrible, but I, uh, I don't like that this happened. I can always paint it white, but so that let me move this over here. So this is my current one that I just did. Mm -hmm. The original one. I had to step it up because he was going digital. And I'm like, I know what digital can do. You did, that. You did not have to step up for me. Okay. So there's my original. <laughs> now, That's I amazing. will say, I like the face of this one better than this one. This one looks like he's been eating a few too many cannolis. Am I right? But I like the shading I, I that, that I did. I kind of get that. I like the shading, but I do kind of get that then italian uh italian <laughs> artists italian yeah. renaissance <laughs> yeah this one and then this one just looks a little bit more like the cartoon but i like the box because it looks almost like it's floating like you can see I, I, you know what? it reminds me of people who do like the of like people who do like like they'll do like fan art or mario but they'll do it in like an art deco or like an art nouveau or like a renaissance like a renaissance painting it's like it's yes. so cool to see that and i mean it's and like... that's kind of my style is just the blending and all that kind of, i do love the renaissance era i will say i don't necessarily have one person that i like as i stated before but i i will say that i am very fond of the renaissance era with the the nice blends because i'm all about blending <laughs> so, right i was I just, like seeing that like when you see like properties like see like properties they're like drawn like a renaissance painting or drawing like that it's like so cool it's like so you guys let me know which one you think looks the best uh the original or the current one maybe it would have looked better without all the edges done this way but um so what do you think about yours i gotta ask oh okay let me switch my camera it's gonna take a, a second yeah. All right. Uh, I think yes. it looks pretty cool. It's definitely got your, it's got your style to it. It does. Yeah. I'm still finding it out. I'm still figuring it out. That's the thing with digital. I'm still trying to figure out my style. I'm only a month in. So. I, I like how he's, you know, he looks like he works out, you know. It wasn't like supposed to be the attention. It was supposed to be like, like kind of like close to like. Like he's wearing well, some Under Armour right there to show off the guns. I didn't. It's because of the shading. It's because of the shading. That's why. Absolutely. <laughs> And then I really, honestly, this is this is just me. I always like, I have a quirk about people's artwork. There. Like even though everything else looks really great, I've always zone in on one thing, and I love the mushroom. Like that's my favorite thing. I know. About your I piece, know. Actually. I actually like the goop. I actually like the fact that I did the goomba in the. He looks good too. <laughs> um so it's yeah be, it's supposed to be world one dash one it's supposed to be the first level. <laughs> <laughs> the first level so yeah i i loved doing this with you uh you know we had some really intense talks from ai work to what inspires us to how we got started to did you did you did you expect that did you expect we were gonna go that go all over the place with that <laughs> yes because like i told you i don't really ask too many questions because of the fact that it just kind of naturally fills right, itself right. in as you go right. along and it just leads on to it. I have my little, my little, if you will, outline of the basic questions and then everything just organically just goes where it needs to. Right, right, exactly. And so I don't know if you're planning on finishing or adding anything else to your I'll picture. probably just I'll probably just leave it like this and just Yeah, it it's it kinda hard to let it go, but I think it looks great. I'll just put my a... signature and then we'll done. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that either. Uh, I I do. I like these Mario ones. Um I know I, I know I probably need to do more uh just like regular Mario stuff just because I'm I'm looking at a lot of Mario fan art and I'm looking at a lot of stuff that's like really inspiring. To me. It's, it's beautiful, like, especially with the movie coming out and the way they've mm -hmm. done the, the yeah, I figured that was perfect timing. Oh, we could do yeah. <laughs> But um yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the stream with Makani Draws. You can check out his channel in the description box down below if you so, don't know what he does and what he's all about. And you go, when do you go live normally? We go live on Sunday at 12 30 p.m. Pacific on my channel, youtube.com slash Makani Draws. It's called Makani Live. There you go. So now the question is, now, now, now I have to return the favor to you, Tabitha. So the question is, when? No, uh, no, we gotta, you just gotta, gotta let me a, know. Yeah. So we end the so our season ends on in mid February, and okay. I think we have next Sunday is reserved for one other person. So if you want to try this Sunday. Or if you want to try next season, which begins in March. When you say you. this Sunday, do you mean the 29th or do you? Yes, yeah, this Sunday is <laughs> 29th. Oh, 
I don't know that I'll be ready by the 29th. <laughs> we'll move. Let's let's try next season, which will begin in like the first, I think the first or second Sunday in March. Yeah. Okay. You let me yeah. know. And I will be prepared. I'll get something special mm -hmm. cooked up for just so, such occasion. So we got a, we got a, we got a, you know, we got a, 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 a guest for a guest. It's like a guest trade, you know. It's like a. <laughs> I I like it. I mean, that really works. So, well, guys, thank you again so much for being here with us. Be sure to hit the like button on your way out. Enjoy the rest of your Friday, even though for me it feels like Saturday. So it's nice that I get an extra day to be. I have to work Saturday, so. Well, and with that, goodbye, everybody. Let's end <laughs> goodbye, on, everyone. Like, Thank you let's so end much. On a high note. If I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video, and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well executed. It's a